a complete inventory management system inside Excel. Hi, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers. And in this week's video, I'm gonna show you how to create this incredible inventory management complete with sales orders, purchases, products, customers, suppliers, and a whole lot more. I'm gonna show you an incredible way to add brand new customers, suppliers, or products that I've never taught before. It's gonna be an incredible training you won't wanna miss. We're gonna do it all from scratch. Every design element from scratch right in front of you, starting from a blank worksheet. I cannot wait, so let's get started. All right, thank you so much for joining us today. I've got a really epic training today that you are not gonna to wanna to miss, the inventory management system. It's gonna be absolutely complete with a dashboard. We are going to be able to add update and sales orders. We're gonna have that. We're gonna have purchase orders. We'll be able to add and update purchase orders. Products, you're gonna be able to add update search for products. And also we are going to have suppliers and customers, all of them on the same sheet. And best of all, we're gonna build that all from scratch, designed completely from scratch, right in front of you today. So it's gonna be an epic training. You're not gonna to wanna to miss that. In fact, I asked just a few things for you. If you could go ahead and click that subscribe and also make sure the notification icon bell. I create these trainings each and every Tuesday, something incredible with Excel because I wanna make you successful with Excel and not just teach you Excel. We build these application templates each and every week. It's absolutely free. All you need to do is click the link in the download description there and I'll make sure to get this workbook template over to you. If you do wanna support the channel, so many great ways to do that. In fact, I'll be creating an update to this template just as I do each and every week. So if you have some ideas you wanna add that I didn't quite add in this training, you want something me to focus on or you want me to fix something, I do that on our Patreon platform and now also YouTube. All you need to do is just go ahead and click the link for Patreon and I'll create a brand new updated workbook along with the brand new updated training each and every week. Next Monday, I'll be doing that. So make sure you get your suggestions in and join the platform. Joining that platform also allows you to get tons of other benefits, including a PDF codebook that helps you know exactly what type of code is in these applications. Along with early bird specials, you'll get access to the workbook and training early and a whole bunch of other things. So that's on patreon and that helps support the channel all right let's get started this is what we are going to be creating we're going to be creating an inventory management system we can simply search for a customer we'll have a search for customer we can be able to add a brand new customer if we want to in fact we're going to be using something that i've never used before adding a brand new customer is just as easy as we can do this we could just simply add it in if we want to do that and adding in a, a address here and then all we need to do is just click the check and that customer is going to be added in automatically. So if we want to search for that, we can see that we have now that search. So really, really cool search features. Not only are we going to be able to do that, but we're going to be able to add, update and delete records with this brand new method that I've never taught before. Not only for customers, we're going to be able to have that same feature for suppliers. If we want to add a brand new supplier, we can do that. And I'm also going to have that for products. In fact, we're going to have here's products. If we want to do that for products, we can search for any type of product, just search there, and then the filter is going to come through. So each customer, supplier, and product will have add new, will have update, will have filters and search. If that's not enough for a training, we are going to have purchases. We're going to be able to create brand new purchase orders. We'll be able to put in a supplier. We will be able to add items that we're purchasing here simply by selecting the items. And we're going to be able to save and update that. Also, we're going to be able to do the same for sales orders. Sales orders, we're going to be able to add a customer here. Again, adding that product here, selecting from a drop down list of products, we're going to be able to have that. And then, of course, we're going to be able to save and update that. We'll be able to also search for sales orders, search for an order. If we want to search for previous, we can simply do that. We can do the same thing for purchases and sales. And to top it all, well, of course, we'll be able to print the order add and save an update and top it all off we're gonna have a dashboard dashboard is going to show our total sales by month may profit 2000 uh, current year profit the top products on hand 
purchases by month and a whole lot so we're going to be doing all the design from scratch and we'll see we're going to get to all the code as well i'm going to show you every single part it's going to be probably a little bit longer training than usual because it's a big application you're welcome to watch this training as many times as you want we're going to show you all the design aspects i'm going to start from an absolute blank workbook i've got a blank workbook right here at least it's a blank worksheet but i still have the data so we're going to go over the data inside that just a brief overview of the data we've got an admin screen with just a few settings we've got some sales tax defaults months and a date range i'm considering using we have uh, some dashboard data this is the data that's going to cover for our dashboard i've got a customer list this is the original list of our customer we've got suppliers we've got a product list we've got an order list and we have order items so these are the items that are associated with every single order so we have all of that okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this one we're going to start from scratch on this one in which we have this inventory management this is the same the main sheet that we have here in this workbook here however this workbook it's all programmed out so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this template and i'm going to slide it over to the side on another screen that i have that way we can focus on the blank one and i can use the one as a reference okay so we're going to get started right away what's the first thing we want to do well we we want to really use two columns just as I do in other applications two columns are going to be for admin I'm going to drop this down here so I can show the tabs and commands because we're going to be working a lot with the formatting and things like that these columns are going to be hidden so we're going to use these for admin purposes and then we'll hide them okay so another thing what I want to do is I want to add a title here but this title here for the group what's called inventory management we are going to use I'm going to use it as shape a text shape for that because I don't want it cell based I don't want it cell based so we're going to call this again inventory management system and I'll probably spell a few things wrong so bear with me I'll do my best shape format I want to center that and put it in the middle and I want to give it a probably let's say 30 giving it we're going to use this color this is going to be our standard color I'm going to give it this and then I'll bold it and then I'll put it in just a, a font that's similar to something like Arial Randomball. Okay, I like that. That looks good. Now we're going to also have a logo and I'll put some shapes in and things like that in a little bit later. I want button sets to go across here. As you saw, we're going to have six different button sets for customers. So we're going to add those and then the icons associated with that. Okay, but first of all, on this, I do not want any fill. So we're going to go shape fill on this one, no fill. And I want no outline on this. So we'll do no outline. Okay, so we're going to have a background that we're going to use on this a nice background we'll use a page layout and then a background we'll be putting in a background now that what does that background look like well i've already got it stored i'm going to work offline i don't know why that always comes up and i'm going to use this background that i have okay so that's kind of a nice background and we'll get rid of the grid lines in a bit so what i want to do is i want to put in some additional shapes right here saving our work as we go along as we always want to do now those shapes that we're going to be using we're just going to use this background so i'm just going to insert shape i'm just going to use the square shape and this is the one that we're going to be using for our menu okay we're going to give it a color the shape fill we're going to use this same color i don't need a line on this shape so we're going to say no outline on this i want a size so we're going to do let's say 0.6 and then we'll do a width of 2.2 okay so that's good i like the way that, that that's the size of that then i want to give it some labels in here so we're going to do customers so i'm going to call this customers this will be our first one and then i am going to let's say write justify it and put it in the middle so that's about what i want but what i want to do is i want to put a little bit of a spacer in between that and also increase the font font size will set to 18. okay that looks good what well, we can also another way to do it is just to center it or left justify it and then move it over so maybe we want to move it over a little bit many ways we can do it we want a space we want to leave room for the icon in here so we're going to add that in what we'll do is we'll go ahead and write justify it, and then we'll give it a nice margin so we're going to use control at one to add that we'll go into the text options here here and we're going to give it a right margin so what we want to do is right around point two okay that's nice okay so i want to have a room for the icon so there we've got our customers now what we're going to be doing is i'm going to duplicate that and then we're going to create them for the each button so i'm going to use Control d and then i'm going to space it out accordingly right about like here and then Control d one more time d d and d okay i like the way that looks so we've got this one's going to be for customers we're going to add this one for suppliers so we'll put in suppliers then we want another one button for products so put in the products here we need another we want to show this one's going to be for our purchases 
or purchase orders is another way to do it. And then another one we want to use for our sales order. And lastly, for our dashboard. Okay. So now that we've got all that, we're going to put in our icons also. So now that we have everything set up just the way we like it, as far as the button's concerned, we also want connector lines. That's going to help us too. I also want to give these unique names so that we can work on that. And that's going to help us win the code. So this one's going to be called menu item one. And then I'm just going to copy the menu item text here and hit enter. That's going to name that button. I'm going to go here to the second one and put two. Likewise, this one's going to be three. This is going to help us in the code because we're going to be looping through these buttons. We want to change the color. So by having very similar names, it will help us run a loop through that. And I'll be showing you that. And this one last one's five. So we have six different buttons, all with very similar names. Just the number of them is different. So this is one, two, three, four, five, and six. I'll add a little bit more spacing on the right side so that we all have unique spacing on that. We can format that. That's another way to do that. Going into the text options, going to make this 0.3. Okay, so that moves them over a little bit to the right margin. So we have a little more spacing. We're going to add in our icons and we're going to add in some connector lines. So I'm going to insert shapes and then a line. And then what we'll do is we'll connect it here and here. Although they don't necessarily have to be connected, we are going to give the shape outline the same color. And also I want the size, the weight of it's going to have to be right around, let's say three point or something like that. That looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it and then I'll move it over here and we can do the same thing. We, we can use connectors in that way if, when we space them out, everything has to be connected. You can also use control D that's also going to work again, just connecting these. And that way, when we space them out, they're all going to be, although they're relatively spaced out just about right. So we're just connecting them to the shapes. And that's the last one. Now that they're all connected, we want to make sure that they're all in the same line. I'm going to hold down the control, selecting all the items. I want to make sure they're all in the same line here. And I want to make sure that they're all horizontally spaced. Okay, that looks good. We've got our all of our information here that we need for our menus. We're going to add in our icons. So I'm going to go insert picture this device. I've got some icons saved right in here. We're going to add them all. So I'm going to adding them all, all the ones that I've saved. I'm going to insert that. Okay, very good. I'm going to set them all height right around 0.3 or maybe a little bit bigger than that. I think we'll use a little bit and then some of them will size a little bit smaller. Okay, so they're all sized right about 4.2. Now all we're going to do is just move them. This add new. I'm not going to use this just yet. We're going to use these add new. Okay, so we have this one. This is going to be used for our customers. So I'm going to bring this over here. That's our customers here. And then now what we want to have here is our printer. This one's going to be, we're going to use this a little bit later on. This one here is with a dollar sign. That's going to be used for our purchases. So we'll drag that up over to purchases. Next up, I want the sales order and we also have our dashboard. So we've got our dashboard icon right about here. We've got here, this is going to be our suppliers. So an icon for the suppliers. And we also have one check. This one's going to be used in our form. So I'll drag that over here. This one's going to be for our products. And lastly, we have for our sales order. Okay, that's looking really good. I like the way that that looks. Now we just want to make sure again, everything gets lined up and then we're going to give them very unique names. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line everything up just right vertically so that they're lined up vertically. Okay, I'm going to undo the selection tool right here. Now I want to give it a very specific name. It's important that we're going to name these. These are going to call menu icon one and two and three and so on and so forth. So menu icon and then I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to add a one to this. So this is going to be our first. Now keep in mind that the same number this is going to be important. Menu icon has eight characters plus the number. Menu item also has eight characters and that's important. Okay, so this is going to be called menu icon one. This one's going to be called menu icon two and you can assume that we are what we're going to add for the rest. Now, this is very important then because we don't know when we select a menu item, we don't know exactly what they're going to be selecting on, whether it's the button or the icon, but we want to extract that number from each one. So it's very important that we can extract the number, whether they're selecting on the icon or they're selecting on the button. Okay, so I've named each one menu icon one, menu item icon two and so on and so forth all the way to the dashboard menu icon six and menu item six okay everything looks really good that's just the way i want it now what i'm going to be doing is we're going to be selecting on these now i want to group everything together and i think that's really important so that it doesn't move and we're going to be uh, hiding and not hiding certain columns so what i want to do is i want to make sure that that group the menu along with the title always stays in the same place and of course at the same size so i'm going to select everything in my selection tool 
and I'm going to group it. And the next important thing is we're going to use control one and we're going to make sure that the properties portion of this always does not move but size with cells. So we don't want it to size with cells, but we do want it to move. And that's for the whole group. Okay, so we can undo the selection tool. Now we've got our menu uh, pretty much ready. So let's go ahead and start with adding some information in. The first one I really want to add is the sales and purchases. So the purchases and sales order, both of those are going to add in, they're going to use the same exact screen. So in fact, I'm going to, let's just add this and put a, make this centered. There we go. I like that a little bit, oops, one space, too many. All right. Remember I mentioned columns A and B we're going to use for admin use. We're going to start adding some information that's going to be important for that. Now, when each tab is selected, I want to know what tab has been selected. So I'm going to put that right here in B2. So we're going to put this, we're going to call this selected tab. And whatever tab has been selected is going to go right here. So maybe this is going to be something like purchases. And it'll be VBA that takes care of that for us. Okay, so what else do I want? I want to know when the order is going to be loading. Now, order load. So that means when the when we search for an order, whether it's a purchase order or it's a sales order, it's going to load. So that's going to be a true or false. I want to know that. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to know the order number. Order both purchases and sales have order numbers. So I want to know what is the order number and I want to put that in here. I also want to be able to have what is the row that's associated with the order, order row. And that's going to be here. So if we take a look at orders, I want to know what row is associated with that. That's going to be important. We're going to go over some named ranges that are going to help us. Let's get this worked out. What is the next order number? So when we create a brand new purchase order or sales order, I want to know the next order number. So we're going to put that right here inside B6. I also want to know the selected order row. That, and then also I want to know the search order row. Selected order row, we have may not use search order row. So when the user runs a search, we're going to put a search up here. I want to know what row is associated. If they put in number one or order number two or whatever, I want to know the row that's associated with that. I also want to know what the customer or supplier. Remember, in a purchases, we're going to be selecting suppliers that we're purchasing from. So I want to know the row associated with that. If it's a sales order, they're going to select a customer and I want to know the customer row. So again, we need to extract either the supplier row or we're going to select the customer row. So we need to extract those. And I want to know what row is associated with that. I'm going to call this the customer or supplier row associated. Okay, next up, I want to know the selected customer row. So we're going to call this selected customer row. Now, that basically means when we're selecting a customer, I want to know what row, when we have a list of customers, I want to know what row the customer is on here. Okay, so I also want to know the next customer ID. When I create a brand new customer, I want to know what ID is going to be associated with that customer. So we're going to call that the next customer ID. Now, I also want to know the supplier row. So remember, we had a list of suppliers here. I want to know what row has been selected. So we're going to call this the selected supplier row. Next up, I want to know the next supplier ID. So you kind of get the hang of it. The next supplier ID. What is the next supplier ID number? We need to know that. Lastly, we're going to focus on products, right? So we want to know the selected product row and also the next product ID. Okay, so this can help us. So we've got all those. Let's give these a color here, a, a unique color so we can differentiate those. And also I'm going to give these a color here. Let's do this with in blue. So we can, these are associated with the order. So I'm going to give those a blue color. And also this one's going to be yellow because this one's going to be for every tab. Okay, so here's the idea. So let's left justify these here. We will right justify this here. And I'm going to put borders all the way around the color is insignificant of the border. Okay, so that's it. So that's all the admin we really need for this. So basically when I make a selection on customers, this changes to customers. When I, make, when I click suppliers, this goes to suppliers. So that's how it's going to work. That's going to be that's going to let us know so we can always look here we know what tab has been selected these we're going to be using very soon when we create the customer buttons and things like that okay so what is it that we want let's focus on the order right that's going to be both again 
we're going to use certain columns. I'm going to use certain columns both for the purchases and sales orders. So it's going to be almost the same. We do not need to use separate columns because they, I just need to change a few text. They're almost all the same. So how do we do that? Well, the first thing what I want to do is I want to set aside some information. I want to know what is the number. Are we in purchases or sales orders? So that's going to be help, important. So we're going to use a formula here and I'm going to just basically run an outline of all the rows that I want to focus on. So we're going to go all the way through A and maybe down to let's say seven here so I'm gonna bring that so I'm gonna format those this is gonna be the top of our orders so that's gonna be for both purchases and sales I'm gonna give it a border we're gonna use that unique color that we've been using that blue that's our theme color for this week we're gonna wrap some borders around that so that's gonna be the top here now we're gonna move these over here we don't need them quite yet but very very soon we're gonna be using them okay so what do I want here well I'm gonna put some information up here so I want to put the order date here I want to put the sub total on the right and I want to put the tax if there's any tax and I want to put the total here all right so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write justify these fields and I want to put these here in white so I'm going to make sure the field uh, fields the user is going to be adding in so I want to make sure those are all in white and I'm going to format those cells and also give it that inside border of our color and not there and then here I'm going to give it that dotted line here that should be sufficient and we can do a full line okay so now we've got our order date here so I've got I also want a supplier now I want to put either in this field so here is also going to be white I'm going to color this white here inside here what I would like to have is I would like to have some either the customer drop down list or the supplier here I want to have the label so either it's going to say supplier or customer how do we know the difference well when I select here I know it's going to be customer so if B2 is customer I know we're going to enter a customer here so how do we know that well we can do is just use an if then statement so we're going to say if equals if B2 equals we'll put in customers let's do capitals because that's we're going to basically do customers then we're just going to put in customer that's easy that's all we need to do otherwise supplier and it's because we're going to use remember we're using the same thing for both customers and suppliers so I'm going to write justify that and so basically when this changes to customers right this is going to change otherwise it's going to be so that way we know what we can use I'll just change this to customer actually because we're gets a single customer and a single supplier this is going to be a drop down list I'm going to format this cells I'm going to put a border at the bottom just to separate this here and we can use the top let's go ahead and use our blue color here I'm going to use the outline all the way around clicking okay so I want the name here and I want the address here so I'm going to format those cells and then also the border on the left and the right we'll get rid of those grid lines because they don't look too pretty here so view grid lines okay so now it's looking a little bit more cleaner all right so here what I want is the name I want to know what's it going to be is it going to be a purchase order and I'm going to expand this just a little bit so we can have a little bit larger so I want to know this is going to be called either purchase order or it's going to be called uh, sales order right so we can use something similar to this I'm just going to copy this and so what is it if it's a customer's we know it's going to be a sales order so I'm going to put in sales order otherwise we're going to call it purchase order if it's a supplier we're going to purchase purchase order okay so now that we have that purchase order I'm going to give it a little bit of a color so I'm going to center that and center it and I'm going to increase the font a little bit change it to our, our color so we can see that bolded up a little bit bigger okay I like that that looks good so it's going to be so basically again all this is it's a sales order or if it's just purchases or anything else it doesn't matter it's going to change to purchase order that's exactly what I want okay perfect so remember this field b2 is going to change when we click on those menu items at the top it's going to change automatically perfect so I like that that's looking really good so here is going to be we're going to have our I want to put the product in here I want to put the description in here next up we are going to have the quantity now when we have a sales order it's going to be the sales price when we have a purchase order it's going to be the purchase price right so we need to make a dynamic column header on this one again so I'll just copy this here and I'll paste that right down here and then in this case into sales order right if it's if it's customers we know it's going to be sales price otherwise if we're actually purchasing something it's going to be the purchase price so it's going to be a dynamic header purchase price okay perfect I like that so again so it goes sales price and then also we're going to have the total 
here. Okay, we're going to format that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all the rows. I'm going to center that. We're going to format the cell. Sorry, it's off the screen. You can use Control-1 as well. And also, I'm going to add in some borders here, in the middle, here, here, and here. I want to make the font. I'm going to put that, keep it black, but put it bold. And then also, I want the fill. And I'm going to use the fill effects. And we're going to use some theme colors for this. And we're going to add this here, this middle theme color. And uh, yeah, like that. I'll just do that. Actually, it's a little bit dark. We'll do this medium and then to light. So it's just going to be a light blue theme. Clicking OK. All right. So I like that. Product, description, quantity, sales price. Again, sales price if it's a customer. Suppliers will get the purchase price. OK. So see how we can dynamically change it based on whatever is located in B2. OK. Very good. We also want to be able to search for an order. So search now search order this won't change regardless if it's a purchase order or sales order search order and then i want to have a white here so that's just going to be allowing the user to search the order i'm going to format again format those cells or control one works just fine we want to format those so the border around it giving that our, our distinct color border all the way around and then dotted line in the center okay so basically what they want to do is they're going to put in the order number here is going to search and display that order now also we've got to put some button sets in here so i'm just going to copy it got a i got the right i'm going to control c this and then control v i'm not going to duplicate it because i don't want it in that group i'm going to bring it down here and of course i'm going to reduce the font size here is where we're going to have let's just say 12 is sufficient for us this is going to be our add new order so add new order We'll shrink it down. I'm going to right justify that here. And then also we can get rid of the format, this shape. We'll just use the standard on the text options. We'll use the standard uh, margin here. So it will do 0.15 is fine. And then bringing it a little bit less and then just reducing it to about 0.2. Okay, so I like that there. That looks pretty good. We want to make sure that we have room for the icon. We've already added the icons here. So we can have add new order, print order, save, and then update. So these are the, where those four icons are going to come into handy. So we'll bring that right about up here. Okay, that's looking very good. Let's change that to 0.1. We're a little bit... Uh, constrained with space okay looking good add new order so i'm going to just control that we need one for duplicate that i'm going to duplicate right down here right down here we're going to have this called save or update so just call it whoops save or update and we're going to use this button for saving new records or updating existing ones so save or update sufficient enough if you want to have that more of a center you can center that and then we can just add some spaces here to do that that gives it a little okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to duplicate these buttons using Control d it's going to duplicate them and i'm going to bring them a little bit over here now these buttons don't need the same width so i'm going to go in they're a little bit smaller buttons so the width will do 1.35 on that one this one's going to be called print order so we're going to change this to print order and this one's going to be called delete order so we can delete order okay very good now these icons here i'm going to use control and i'm going to resize them and then we're going to change that to point two and then we'll just go okay so that's sufficient i'm going to bring all of them to the top now because we created those buttons first if i move them over they would be under these buttons so i want to move them to the top so all we need to do is just bring them right up to the top okay good so now that they're we just need to move them over okay we're going to right justify this one and get some space so we got a delete order we are going to print this one can be centered and then we can add another space here to give it some spacing proper spacing okay add new order we'll take on the plus save update we'll take on the, the okay so that's looking really good we'll line things up make sure that the icons are all lined up vertically and horizontally i'm going to do the same thing for this everything good now we're going to make sure that they're vertically lined here everything look good including the buttons here we're going to just simply use that okay i like that that's the way it looks it looks very good so now we're going to save our work we can undo the selection and now we're going to group them accordingly holding the control down i'm going to group them individually and then i'm also going to group them as a whole together that's important so i'm going to use that grouping them and we're going to give them a very specific name to this group and the reason we want to do that is because we need to hide this group if it's not a purchase order or not a sales order we need to hide the group so very important so again holding down the control and all these if there are any other shapes with it we'd also group that i'm going to group them right here and i'm going to call this order group order group okay so we want to make sure to hide this group unless we're on purchase we don't when we're showing customers suppliers products 
we don't want or dashboard we don't want this group to show up okay close it making sure that we've got our spacing right that looks pretty good we've got a nice look to the screen already okay very good we can do a little bit of formatting we know this is going to be a short date format so we can change that to short date and we know this is going to be their currency or we can use accounting either one is fine for that all right very good and the same thing for the purchase price and the total these are all we'll go down to let's say 108 that'll give us about 100 lines which is sufficient enough also giving them the currency account and then the product description now what I'd like to do is when I start adding some information here I want some conditional formatting to show up here so I've got some different rules when I want to know exactly we're going to have really three different rules one is going to be for alternating rows and then I want to associate when I create a brand new one or I select a row I want to have a conditional formatting on that as well okay so let's add some conditional formatting for that and we're going to do that right now so now what I want to do is I want to add multiple rules and it's going to be all the way from D starting nine all the way to eight so I'm going to do conditional formatting manage rules we're going to add some new rules so a new rule we use a formula now it's going to be under two conditions so it's going to equal and there's two conditions the first one is I want to make sure that there is a value in uh, of course d9 however in this case I'm going to move one row up to d8 and that means that we're going to color every single row and of course it's every single row so we don't want the dollar sign before the eight and that means I want the first blank row colored and I'll show you why, why that's important d8 does not equal empty and the next condition is we're going to use a different color for both odd and even rows so for even rows mod of row two so for those I want to give them a color so I'm going to do a format and we're going to just do a fill we'll do a fill we'll do it let's do a little bit lighter color so I've got some lighter colors here I'm going to use this as a lighter color here and that actually that's about the same and we'll click OK and I want some borders on that so we're going to use our color here I'm going to use our, our consistent color and I'm going to use a dotted line on the left the bottom and the right okay so this is going to be I'm going to copy this this is going to be only for even rows and so there has to be a value in the row above clicking OK and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, one, another new row but this is going to be for even rows so I'm going to paste in that excuse me for odd rows basically what I want to do is this is going to be a one so we're going to do this let's do backspace one okay good so now what I want to do is I want to format those very similar except the fill is going to be white and the border is going to be that same color border also on the left uh, using the dotted line the left the bottom and the right okay so it's going to give us a nice look and feel so that as we add data the rows will automatically and we're going to click apply okay so now by using row eight you see how this row is colored I want that that means as soon as I put something in here the next row so it shows the user the next row is available for that product we'll be putting in the product names here and that's what I want now I actually want to add one more rule when I select a row I want that row to show up All right, there's additional features that we can add that row is going to be based in what's in b7 so if I do 12 that means I want that row to show up very differently so how do we do that I'm going to go in and manage those rules and I actually have to make this I'm going to make this all the way to 108 and then 108 that's going to give us 100 rows so 108 okay so that'll apply to all the rows so now I'm just going to copy that that applies to and I'm going to do a brand new rule and I'm use a formula and it's going to be equals based on the row where's the row it's in b7 so b7 equals the row okay now what I'm going to do is I'm going to format that but very distinctly we're going to give it a fill and then fill effects and we want to make sure that we've given a fill effects of something based very close to our our color I like this this looks pretty good we'll go down to about here and that's a nice color going to go dark color and then a font of bold and then white and the only other thing is when you have a selected row which is going to be our selected row as we select it you want to make sure that this is on the top you don't want you don't want it down here you want that selected row to take precedence all the way on the top so clicking okay all right that looks really good okay so we can see as we change that we know that selected row now I'm not sure how oops, let's change that to 11. okay the only other thing we needed to do was we needed to make sure that we apply to all the rows up to 108 so I want to do that now copying this and pasting it in here is going to ensure that it's also the row 108 okay clicking okay because there's a lot of features I want to add to this in the selected row now when we make a selection change that row is going to change we're going to use VBA to do that okay very good so we've got that as we clear we see that we have information all right and we can clear this out too so everything's looking really good we've got the emphasis that most but I also want to put the order number here and I want to put is it a purchase 
or is it a put the order number now we know the associated order is going to be here so we have the order here so if i know the order i want to put that order number here how can we do that okay so what i want to do is basically just put in whatever's here and i want to put in so purchases let's equals if i forgot the quotation marks this equals customers right then we know excuse me if we did purchases then we know it's going to be a purchase order right equals purchases we'll do quotation mark purchases then we know it's going to be a purchase order so then i'm going to do purchase order purchase because i want to put that purchase order number in here purchase order and then we'll do a space and then number okay otherwise what otherwise it's going to be a sales order sales order number we could use the number and okay so then all we need to do close it out and i want to put what is what is that sales uh, we'll do a space if we want to uh, probably no space then what we can do is whatever the number is where's that number located it's located in b4 okay and then that's all we need to do so now we see it says sales order number one so i'm going to write justify it and then i'm going to give it a bold here give it a look put it center here yeah that's i like it centered here increase the font so we see the sales order number one so if this were to change to let's say purchases it would say purchase order number one. purchase okay so then it's going to change the purchase order number one so we see how it becomes dynamic again based on that all right very good so we've got the basis of it what i'd like to do is i'd like to put in some named ranges here and i'd like to put in some formulas here before we do that let's go over some of the named ranges that exist just a brief overview here again the list of customers here we have we have a list of suppliers here of course with the supplier and all their information we have a list of products here and some named ranges associated with that we have a list of orders here with the order date the customer or the supplier basically the name date and the total and we have order items these are individual items associated with the order the order number the order type is it a purchase or a sale the product the description quantity price and the row and the database row which, which we'll be going over so that's it so i've got some named ranges that are associated and let's go over some of those named ranges right now so formulas name manager and we'll take a look at some of them we're going to skip the criterias we have a customer id so basically all these are using offset formula which we've gone over in the past but basically offset is going to allow us to dynamically increase that name range as we add so we've got customer id i've got customer name here i've got uh, let's take a look at order id so we got an order ID for based on all the orders. I have the order total. So there's going to be, we're using these for our graphs and order type here. So we've got an order type and we've got uh, order item quantity. We'll go over these a little bit later on. I want to go over the product ID, products ID, product name. That's going to be helpful. And lastly, we're going to go over suppliers, supplier ID and supplier name okay so now that we kind of understand we just have different named ranges we can start to fill those in what is the order row if i take a look in the orders i see the first order row starts in row four so if i'm going to return if i want to know what row order number one is i can use a match to do just that so we're going to do that equals if error and we're going to run a match what are we matching and i'm matching on whatever is located in b4 matching i'm looking up whatever's in b4 and I'm going to use the looking up. I want the order ID. So order ID here. This is the one that I'm looking up. And I want an exact match. So we're going to use zero on that. Now we're going to add three because we want the row associated. If there's an error, we're going to do double spaces. And that's going to tell us order number one is on row four. What is the next order row? If you've seen my videos before, you kind of understand this. But the repetition helps. You can use if error in case there's no data. I'm going to use the max of all the orders ID as long as they're numerical it's fine i want to know the max number and of course i want to know the next one because that's going to get us our next if there's no data we need to put in something so we'll put in one that's okay perfect so the selected order row we went over that already the search order row is going to be based on what so if i put in one here and i'm searching for one here let's left justify that i want to know what row is associated to make sure it's a row so it's called the search order row let's maximize this and it's going to be basically exactly the same as this except we're using a different source so we're going to copy that and i'm going to go right down here but instead of uh, looking at b4 we're going to look right here into k4 
So I want to know the row that's associated, right? So if I change this to two, this is going to change to five. That's how we know as long as there's a row here, we know that there's an order that they're looking up. Okay, now I want to know the customer supplier row. So we need to use, again, I'm going to use an if statement because we don't know if it's a purchase order, it's going to be a supplier. If it is a sales order, it's going to be a customer. So I want to know the row that's associated. So we need to use an if there. So again, let's do that. Equals if this is purchases. So then we know we're looking up a vendor, vendor, right? So then what we're going to be doing is we're going to use what I want. I want to know the row that's associated with that based on the name. So we're going to use match again, match. What am I matching here? I'm matching whatever the supplier is located in here. And I'm going to look it up in the supplier name, right? Supplier name. We're looking up the supplier name and we want an exact match and we want to add three because it's the row that's associated with that. Otherwise, what if it's false? If it's not purchased, we're looking up a customer and we're going to have to wrap that in all if error as well. So then in that case, we're going to match based on a customer. So we're looking up the customer name here and it's going to be based on the customer name range and we want an exact match. And again, we're adding three. Okay, so that's going to be the end of our if statement, but I do want to, in case there's an error, I'm going to wrap it all in if error, if error. And then what we want to do is I'm just going to show empty. Okay, perfect. Okay, so now as long as we have a, now this should be supplier, right? So if we take a look at a supplier and we see ABC Company is one of our suppliers and we know that they're on row four. And I put in ABC Company here. We know we want to make sure that this row goes to four, which is correct. That's exactly what I want. Okay, very good. Now we're going to get into the selected customer row, the next customer ID. We can use this selected customer row when I have a list of customers and I select a customer, it's going to show up here. The next customer ID, we can we can know that. If error, we can add that in now. It's going to be basically all the customer IDs plus one. If there's no value, we're going to return one. Okay, so we need to know that. Oops, customer ID, the max, forgot the max. If error, max, we're looking for the max of customer ID, max. That's what I want. Okay, so now that we have the max, and I also want to do the same thing for the supplier and the same thing for the product. So again, equals if error, we're going to use the max based on the supplier ID. Supplier ID plus one gets us the max. If there's no value, we're going to return one. Skipping two, we want the next product ID. We're going to use equals if error, same thing, maximum product ID plus one there's an error okay perfect okay so now we have the next so we that's gonna help us because when we add new customers new suppliers or new product we need to assign that brand new id so we need to know what the next one available is okay very good saving our work now what we want to do is i'm going to add some name ranges remember i've got a product name here so i'm going to go to let's say d108 d108 and then i'm going to go all the way up and i'm going to add here some data validation so here data validation here i'm going to make it a list value and i want it based on the product name if we're not sure we remember we can use f3 is going to tell us what it is so f3 will do that we can look up product name clicking ok and we want an error alert so that's going to look good okay so that's a drop down data validation list for the product id so when i select the product now we can see that we can select the product of course we want to automate the description and we'll be getting to that soon Okay, so great. So we can see how that's going to work out just fine. Everything looks good on our order. All right, now we're ready to add in some of our customer information. Again, when we're going to be doing this, when we run these tabs, what I want to do is I want to hide certain columns and then show certain columns. So what we're going to do is we're going to slide all the way over here and starting out right around P, column P here. That's okay. We're going to, we're going to expand this column here. So in column P is where we're going to put that first customer information. So we're going to have up here inside, let's start around right here. I want to copy and paste. So I'm going to go into the customers and I pretty much want all of this here. Here. So I'm going to copy some data too and some conditional formatting and that's going to help us. So I'm going to copy this and back inside our inventory management right around P6 is where we're going to add that in. So P6, I'm just going to paste it right here. Okay, so here's where our customers. Now up here, we're going to add some additional information starting also in up here. I want to add in a search customer and a button up here. So that's where we're going to play in as far as from P all the way through X. So we're going to go down here. I'm just going to add some borders. We're going to go into the format cells. F1 will do. We're going to use our color here, our current color. We're going to use a thick border all the way around, clicking OK. OK, so our customer's information is going to be here. Now, don't worry about this background because that's all going to change. So the idea is this. Basically, what we want to do is I want to have a search customer. So here, we're going to have search customer. 
uh, just one just one customer that we'll be searching for or searching for and then inside here we're going to have this is going to be white so i'm going to add this to white this is going to be a color putting some borders around here so we're going to format those cells again once again going in adding left lower and the right and then of course the dotted line in the middle Okay, so the users are going to be able to search and then we'll have those customers come here. Now we're going to add some conditional formatting in here, which we're going to get to in a little bit, but I wanted the additional information here. So I like that, just the basic information. We'll have a uh, button here called Add New Customer. So that's going to be important. So why don't we do that right now? We can just use this. So we're going to, I'm going to copy this and this. And I'm going to copy it. I'm just going to bring it right over here. I'm going to paste it right in here. So that's going to be our Add New. We're just going to call this Customer instead of Order. So Customer. Okay, we'll also give it a name, so it's a distinct name for this one, and we'll bring it over here, adding enough spacing here. Okay, so holding that control, make sure space, and then we're going to group that together. And we're simply going to call this Add New Customer. So, Add New Customer. That's the button that we're going to be using for that. That's the button that will show up when we select the customer. Okay, I like that. That looks very, very good. So, now what we want to do is pretty much do the same thing for our next which is going to be suppliers now where do we want the suppliers to go we want to leave a certain amount of space and we're going to put those probably right around aa so here's where we're going to put the suppliers again you're going to do just the same i'm going to take the supplier i'm going to copy this maybe the first two suppliers copy this and then go back into our inventory manager inside aa6 or actually right down here aa6 pasting that here so now we have got our suppliers here and then the same thing so i'm just going to copy and paste all of this and I'll paste it right in here. So instead of this, it's going to be search supplier. And then, of course, our button's going to change as well. So this, we're going to be search supplier. And then both of those, uh, we're going to write justify here. And we're going to change this to add new supplier. Okay, very good. Things are moving really fast here now. All right, so continuing on. So we're going to size that button accordingly. And uh, we're going to make sure this icon is... is uh, point two all the way around that's the way we want it if you see that it changes all you need to do is just make sure that we're not locking the aspect ratio so that we can change them both at the same time of course when you change the group if they're grouped as a size of course it's going to change whoa that's not what we want point point two not two okay very good so we've got our supplier button here ready to go so we're going to change the name of this we need not this to be add new we're going to change it to supplier make things easy for us and consistent so that's going to change the supplier and as you can imagine we are going to do almost exactly the same for products products also important so there's going to be some consistency with what we're doing again so we're going into the products here inside the product sheet i'm going to scroll all the way up i'm going to copy that and along with the first row so i'm going to copy that going back into our inventory management and then we're going to slide over here to right around let's say al and i'm going to paste that directly in here now we've got our suppliers again copying this here we're going to update that and then pasting that right here so we're going to search product here this is going to, not going to be supplier but product where we're going to search for that and then we can add that in now what we want to do is we also want to make sure that we have the name of the button here so it's not going to be obviously add new it's not going to be supplier we're going to stretch that out to make it look just right and we're going to change this to product and then of course the button name as well needs to be updated to instead of add new supplier it's going to be add new product okay very good i like that we'll get everything centered just right so that's what we're going to do that now so the idea is when we change or edit or clear this list we want all the products to show up and of course everything's going to be showing up directly here as we select it so those columns are going to be changing let me highlight those and we're going to auto size those columns here we're going to do the same thing here and then also if we don't want this size and we can always hold down the control and select all these buttons and making sure we're going to use also control one and want to make sure that inside the properties and we go down here move but don't size with cells we certainly don't want these buttons moving or sizing perfect i just like the way that that is we do want to add some consistency to the borders here so we're going to do the control all the way and make sure that we have our borders that are consistent that blue border should go all the way around adding that consistency is very important in these applications and we can also put in some black borders or blue borders or however we want inside there so we'll go ahead and change this and then i'm going to highlight all three of those and we're going to add a consistent inside border going to be that blue so formatting those cells we want that consistent using that line inside borders here 
and we can set the top here to that blue okay that's looking really good clicking okay they're all the same i'm going to save it now we're just about ready to create and make those menus active right so when we want to select on those menus not only do i want to change but i want to change the look and the color of these menus as well meaning that that selected menu the color is going to change to a darker color because i want to differentiate between the other menus and the selected all right so let's go in we're going to go into vba and we're going to make that happen so we can start to work with whatever selected tab we have now since this is a bit longer training i've already created some of the macros that are going to help us so let's go ahead and take a look inside the vba developer alt f11 is the shortcut visual basic and we're going to take a look at some of those so we've got again this is our sample one that's what we've been working on i've got that handy on the other screen this is the one we're going to be working on we've got some code on the invoice manager that i've uh, commented out i've got customer macros menu macros order macros product macros and supplier macros so they're actually relatively customer and then product and supplier are super simple right because it's almost the same thing menu macros is what we want to go on so menu select this is the macro that's going to run now i'm going to go over every step of this code sometimes i like to write out code but this is a little bit longer one so we can speed things up but don't worry i'll go over every line of code so basically the idea is this i want to use a single macro so i'm going to hold down the control button on regardless of whether button or whatever icon I select, I automatically want to use the same macro and have that happen. So I'm going to right click here and click assign macro. And that is the macro that we're going to use. I'm going to use this workbook only and we're going to do menu select. Now, what's going to happen when I select it? Well, when I select it, we want the menu number. I want to extract the menu number. The menu number is going to be in this case, one, two, three. Now we can get that menu number from either the button or the icon how are we going to do that well if we take a look here we see it's menu icon what if i get rid of the first eight characters what's it going to leave me with it's going to leave me with the number what if i do the same thing here what if i know the button i've clicked on i get rid of the same the first eight characters it's going to leave me with the menu number and so by knowing the menu number i can easily figure out which one was was clicked and also i can take the text whatever text is in the button here and i can figure that out now that text of course is only in the one that says menu item so if they click on here i can't take the text from whatever they clicked on but i can take it from here okay so understanding that let's move forward with that we're going to dimension the menu numbers long and i want to know the menu item is long the menu item okay so the menu number is what i said we're going to remove the first eight characters using the replace statement now the application caller is the name of the shape that called it now the name of the shape could be in this case it could be menu icon one or it could be menu item one so regardless we're still going to take away getting the first eight characters and we're going to replacing them the first eight characters is this and that that's why the naming is so important that our icon and our button both start with eight characters and then the number that's why it's so important so what we're going to do is we're going to take those eight characters and i'm going to replace them with nothing when i do that it's going to leave me with the menu number then what i want to do is as if you remember i want to take in the purchases here i want to whatever name is the user selected here i want to take whatever name and i want to put it directly inside b2 so that's the text so b2 is equal to the shapes it always starts with the menu item then the menu number text frame text range so this is going to put in the menu text so and we're going to put that directly in b2 because that's very important for everything we want to do so that's the menu text i also want to color the menu shapes now i've created a group called ims group in fact i need to do that right now this one this group 103 this is our group now what do we want to do with that i want to go inside that group and for very specific items i want to color them so i'm going to give that group a name called ims ims being inventory management system group so g r o u p did i abbreviate that or not so okay perfect ims group that's the name i want so inside this group i want to look for something for the menu item goes one to six now why is this important because what i want to do is i want to color the selected one but if i click on it how do i know which one's selected so the first thing i want to do is i want to take all these shapes and i want to give them that standard blue color how do i know what the color is if i click on one and i go into the home and i go into the fill here and i go into the more colors and i can see that that's an rgb of 75 52 
206. 75, 52, 206. So we're going to take all those and we're going to color all those buttons the same. Then I'm going to color only the selected one a little bit darker. So the first thing what we want to do is take all of them grouping. This is why that number is so important from one to six menu item and the menu item number here fill that rgb 75 52 206. now i figured out i want a little bit of a darker color well how did i figure out the darker color well all i did was just go into the here and then i just chose a little bit darker color more colors and then let's say i chose a darker color whatever it is and then i just use these numbers to figure out what that darker color is so that's exactly what i did to figure out what is that darker color so we're going to first this line all we're doing is coloring them all to blue then the next one i want to color the selected one how do we know which is the selected one because we've already extracted the menu number here so we know that group items menu item and menu number that's the darker one so this is a little bit darker color okay great so we understand that now when we click on something we can see whoops let's fix that here dashboard group okay i haven't created that yet so we gotta comment these out because these groups aren't created yet so we're gonna just comment those out that's fine and uh, okay so very good so let's continue on and then just go ahead in here and then debug that okay just these shapes haven't been created yet so no problem we can't if we try to run this if i try to run this without actually selecting something it's going to happen okay so let's go back into our sales order here now we see it's working sales order the only thing that that group wasn't created or customers okay now we've got our customers so what i was explaining to you see how this color is darker the selected one is darker here that's very important now obviously these buttons we also need to hide these buttons so that's what the next step is going to be so if i take a look so we just made it through here now we have order group this we have we add a new custom the only one we don't have is a dashboard group yet we haven't created that so i can uncomment these out we have the order group now the order group remember if i look in purchases or sales order and we'll go over exactly remember i created this order group that's for the order i only want to show this so the idea when you have a tab system here is pretty much you want to hide everything you want to hide all the shapes and you want to have hide all the columns then you only want to show what you need to show for example i only want to show columns p through x for customers and i only want to show the add new customer button when it's clicked suppliers i only want to show so the first step is always to hide everything and that's what we're going to do right now hide all the shapes the only shape we're not hiding is the dashboard because we haven't created it yet which we'll get to and then we're going to group all the shapes into a dashboard so we're going to hide the order group we're going to hide the new customer the new supplier and the new product we're hiding all of those shapes that we just created then we're going to use select case based on the menu number i need to know which one they have selected if the case is one remember we've defined it here menu numbers one through six so if it's one we know it's customers if it's two suppliers three products so if it's customers what are we going to do oh i skip one step i want to show you this one right here hiding this is the one i want to hiding all the columns so all the way from b through bd so taking all the columns from d excuse me d all the way through bd we're hiding it so basically let's go ahead and uh, unhide these so i'm starting here all the way from d and i'm going all the way to bd here and we're hiding everything so everything gets hidden first so everything so all we do and then we've got this is going to be for the dashboard so this area we're going to use for the dashboard so i'm going to hide everything once we hide everything i want to select it and i want to freeze the pane so this is kind of a nice feature now the reason we're going to do this let's say we have a lot of customers right so i want to be able to scroll the customers so you see how what we're going to do is i'm going to select row nine and then we're going to freeze the panes except for the dashboard we don't need that so that is going to automatically so that as we scroll up you see the customer list stays fixed and that's kind of a nice feature to do that all we need to do is select row nine or any a9 and entire row select and then freeze the panes freeze the panes now that's exactly the same thing if we're doing here and we go into view here and we go into freeze panes and we unfreeze or we freeze panes and we freeze paint so it's the same exact thing except we're doing it through vba okay so now that we understand that we're, then we're going to hide all shapes i skipped this before so we're going to hide all shapes cases so for our first customer we're simply unhiding the columns p through x for the customer we are going to show the new customer button okay cases two we're simply unhiding columns aa through ai and we're showing the add new supplier button for the products 
we are going to show again on high columns and show that okay so for sales orders we need to do a few things if i click on purchases or sales orders this is case four and this is five right so for either one purchases if we take a look at purchases we see purchases takes care of d through let's say m right or n i believe d through n right so d through n is all for purchases but it's also the same for sales orders remember we use the same one for purchases and sales so this case is going to be cases four or five meaning sales and purchases or or purchases d through n we're going to unhide the order group is that we're going to show those shapes display those also i want to set some validation if i take a look inside here supplier we want a list of suppliers right excuse me a list of sales orders oh we just have to fix something so this should be customers right notice it's sales order so we got to update this to sales order that's very important so sales order never mind the spaces in front of that okay so we're just going to update these remember it's going to be sales order so i got to update that if it's a sales order not customers that makes more sense customers perfect i'll just update that purchases this looks good and this should be sales order okay so in that case what we want to do is we want to make sure that as the customer has been selected and it's a sales order and we also want to make sure that this is set to customers customer sales order okay purchase price sales price when we have a sales order purchases is purchase price that looks good so the idea is this when i select purchases i want that supplier to be displayed i want a drop down list of suppliers when a sales order is selected i want a drop down list of customers so this drop down list this data validation must change based on the type of order so if i click on data validation you see it's customer name right here based on the customer names however if it's purchases and i go back into the data validation we see that it has been changed to supplier name so this cell e5 the data validation drop down list is going to change based on whether it's purchases or sales orders because we're using the same cell okay so to do that what i want to do is i want to make sure that we're always going to delete that validation that's very important regardless we want to delete the validation so to do that if it's four or five the first thing we want to do is delete the validation then we're going to select e5 just to make sure that nothing else is selected to make sure that there's no shape if there's a shape selected it could create an issue so we've selected it if the menu item is four we know it's a purchase we need to create data validation for that called supplier name that's the name range that we've used however if it's a sales order we know we're going to add the customer name the data validation is going to be the customer name okay so basically that's how we add this dynamic data validation based on whether it is a supplier or whether it is a customer here okay very good so we have that and then what we're going to do is we're going to run a macro called order add new and basically that just clears it up we're going to tie to this button here okay what if it's a dashboard if it's a dashboard we are going to again show certain columns called aw through bd the dashboard group which isn't available just yet is uh, going to be displayed we're going to refresh all data we're going to be using one pivot table and we're going to active windows we're going to unfreeze the panes right i don't want for the dashboard i don't want to be able to have that frozen okay all right so that is all we're going to select r4 just select something else so that is all the code we need to do to change this so that's going to be whether they select on an icon or whether they select on a button it's automatically going to change okay very good let's go ahead and focus on the customers we're going to start here i'm going to update some conditional formatting in here and i want to show you we're going to use actually four different conditional formatting rules then what we need to do is just copy that rule to suppliers and products and it's going to be almost the same okay so we've got a little bit of a conditional formatting here already i just need to update that so i'm going to go to the conditional formatting i'm going to manage the rules just one format so what we want to do is i want to edit the rules starting a9 that looks good so we're going to have instead of a9 i'm going to use p9 p9 is going to be that first so we're going to change that we just copied over and for the even rows so what do i want to do i want to add that color we'll do the fill i'll do this fill color that's fine border here i think that looks good we'll do the color here i will do the dotted line on the left the bottom and the right side and clicking okay because that's going to be for auto rows. i'm going to copy that i'm going to click okay and we're going to add another rule let's, let's apply where are we going to apply that to we're going to apply that to all the way down to a larger row let's say 9999 okay and click apply all right next up a brand new rule i'm going to use a formula i'm going to paste that in here this is going to be for odd rows so in odd rows i'm going to format that 
um, we're going to use the border is going to be relatively the same as it was. Of course, we're going to use that color that we're consistent using the dotted line on again on the left, the bottom, and the right. This time, we're going to give it a fill of the white color. So that's going to be what we're going to be using for those odd rows. Clicking OK. All right, so clicking apply. Okay, so now that looks good. Now I want to do two other rules. The one is going to be for the selected row. I'm going to do apply to. Let's copy the applies to to make sure it applies to the same range. Apply that. Okay, so a new rule. Now this is going to be based on the selected row. Now that selected custom row is going to be based on B10. So that's going to equal row. And I want to format that very similar to what we've been using, the fill effects here, using those recent colors here, and then we can use this color right here. Okay, so I like that. That looks really good. And what I want to do now is I want to go to the font, bold, and then make sure that that's white. And then click OK, and then click OK. Now the applies to is also going to be the same. We're going to apply that to the same range. Now I want to do one more rule. When I create a brand new record, I want that to differentiate, to be, look very different. How are we going to know if it's a new record? Well, what I'm going to do, look in column X. I'm going to put an N on that row, an N, okay? So let's do this. Let's try this. Let's say this is going to be our brand new. I'm going to put an N here. Now, this N is going to be hidden eventually, so you won't see that. But if there's an N here, I want to distinctly color this row. So let's go back into the conditional formatting, right? And then we're going to manage rules, and I'm going to create a brand new rule. I'm going to copy this because the applies to is going to be the same. I'm going to do a new rule, and I'm going to use a formula. And it's going to be based on a certain row. So it's going to be based on, we're going to do it on X. Okay, so actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to just update this. So X, we're going to get rid of that row. We don't need that. Let's clear that out. So X9 is going to be equal to N. Of course, it's going to be every row. So we're going to get rid of that equals, and then we'll just use the capital N. Okay. And then we're going to get rid of the row. We really don't need that. And then I want to give it a very distinct format. So what kind of format is it? We're going to give it a font. I want it bold and I want it blue. And then what I want to fill, I want it white and I want the borders and I want it clear all the way around. So this border here is going to be all the way around that blue border. Again, very distinct. Okay, clicking OK and clicking OK. Okay, so now, and oh, let's just do the applies to. We're going to uh, update that applies to, making sure that it applies to all the fields. Going to the home. And then conditional formatting manage rules. We want to make sure that that N applies to all everything that it did. Okay, perfect. I like that. So now when we change this to N, it's going to be very distinct. Okay, that's exactly what I like. Okay, the only other thing is I want to just make a quick update. I'm going to do this update for the customer supplier and product because I really don't want to show the rows there. Okay, that looks a little adjustment. So the idea is this. When we have a new record, I'm going to put an N here. And then I'm going to put a little checkbox here. And then I'm going to automate this so that way it looks very, very different that you can see that we automatically add in the new records there. And so that's going to be just going to center that up. Okay, so that's what I want. I want it. So when it's not a new record, it's going to go back to the normal way it looks. Okay, that's going to be really helpful. Now all we need to do is just go to the suppliers and products and make those two updates as well. So to do that, we've got all four, let's double check, we've got all four conditional formats based now on that. So we're going to, and then all we need to do is just simply copy that to that. So we're going to make sure that it goes through W, which is I've updated it. Everything's perfect on there. So all we want to do now is just copy this and then go to suppliers. And I'm just going to paste it right in here. Now, when we paste conditional formats, we need to be careful that we are automatically going to add more. So we need to update those accordingly. So we're going to go into home, conditional formatting, and we're going to manage rules. So see, we have more rules than what we want. So I'm going to remove this rule. Okay, perfect. So we got four rules. Of course, the applies to needs to be updated. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in here in any one of them. I'm going to select everything that we want to apply. And we're just going to change this to the large row 999. That's sufficient. We're going to copy this and we're just going to paste it up to each one of these. And we're going to make the adjustments accordingly. So instead of this is not going to be X9, right? We're going to use AI. So this is going to be column AI. That's where we want that new end to show up for that. Clicking OK. Now also B10, of course, our selected row is not in for suppliers. It's in B12. So we need to update this to 12. Clicking OK. Now also it's not P9, now it's AA. So we're going to edit this rule. We're going to change that to AA. And we're going to do that both for the odd and now for the even. So that's all we need to do. So when we're updating it, it's very easy when we can copy and paste. OK, clicking OK. All right, so I like that. Now when we add an N in here, we need to change the applies to here to make sure that it doesn't come over that cell. Manage the rules and make sure that we've got everything 
consistent. Okay, we have one extra rule we don't need there, so we can delete that, clicking OK. Okay, so now if we were to add an N in here, we want the same information to apply. That's perfect, capital M. So we can see that for new records, it's also going to be available there. Perfect. I really like the way that that looks. Now we have our conditional formatting. And if I want to know the selected supplier row and I change this to, let's put in this 10, we want to make sure that that's automatically colored. Okay, very, very good. So when I select it, we can see that it's highlighted properly. All right, now all we need to do is just copy this and go into the products and then paste the same one and paste that right here. Again, updating the conditional formatting. AT is where we're going to use that. So I'm going to use conditional formatting. Manage the rules. We've got one extra rule that we don't need. We can remove that. We want to make sure that the applies to covers. This time it's going to be selecting on any there. Going to go in there all the way through AS. And then we're going to do a large row. So this one's going to go AL through AS. The applies to must be copied and pasted to all of the rules for our uh, products here putting that all in. Now we're going to make the updates. The rule, this one's going to be AT is where we're going to put in that N. So that's going to be the last one. So that's going to be AT9. Okay, clicking OK. We're going to update the other rules. This one's not going to be B12, but it's going to be now B14. B14 is our selected product row. So we're going to change this to A4, clicking OK. Now what we want to do is also, this is not going to be AA. AL is where our first column of, of data is here. So that's going to be our product number, clicking OK. And then what we're going to do is we're going to edit the rule and click OK. OK, very good. AL, perfect. So I like that. So now we have everything applied and we're going to apply it, clicking OK, just to double check to make sure if we have some more data in here, we are going to get our rows. And uh, if I have an N here, we want that color accordingly for our new rows. I like it. And then we'll just go ahead and center this as we have done the rest. Perfect. So now we've got customers suppliers and products so what i want to do is when i click add new whether it's add new customer or whether we're adding new suppliers or whether we're adding new products i want to have a checkbox here so that we can user can now save what they want to do but i want to have two checkboxes when they select a row i want to also put a delete so basically they, they can delete a record they can update a record or they can save a record so how are we going to do that well, we are going to use just a little button here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this here and here. I'm going to copy these two. We're going to use that for our save and I'm going to paste it right here. I'm going to get rid of the text on that. We're going to make this one small so we don't need any text. And I'm going to make this very, very small. So we're going to use this for both save and update. So point two and uh, point two on that. And also the icon here, which is here, we're going to make that a little bit smaller. We don't need this big. So we're going to go in here. We're going to make that point one eight and point one eight. Okay, so I like that. That looks sufficient for our checkbox. We can center it by selecting them both here and then just centering them both vertically and horizontally. I like that. That looks good. Now all we need to do is just copy this. We shouldn't have centered it. I'm going to copy this because I want to create one more. I'm going to use control D for duplicate and I'm going to use this for our, we also want to make sure that we have a delete so we can delete any specific row if we want to control C and then control V out of here making this icon the same size. They're going into 0.18 here, making it a little bit smaller and putting that over here. Okay, I like that. Let's a little bit big so we can put 0.16. Okay, so again, we're gonna center both of those and we'll make them a single group. So I'm going to, actually we just group each of them individually and then I'm gonna center this. So we're gonna give those specific names that we're gonna call out when we want to. What are those names gonna be? We're going to call this group save item button and delete item button. So we want to make sure that they're grouped. And this one, again, we have to make sure that they're grouped. Okay, good. So this one's going to be called save item button. Now I'm going to use the same button for whether they're suppliers, customers, or products, but we can run different macros and do that. This one is going to be called delete item button. Okay, very good. Now, when do we want these to be these shapes to, to show up? Well, basically, I want them to show up at certain times. If I'm into, let's, oops, I don't want to go back into our sales order, and I'm going to move those around. Debug that. We don't need that. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to bring these over here, and for now, and we've given them names, but I want them to appear. When do I want them to appear? I want them to appear when a user selects on a record whether it's suppliers products or customers and i want both the check and the delete however when they click add new i only want the check mark to, 
So basically, we need to basically hide these items and only show them when we select on a specific record, whether it's customers, suppliers, or products. So that is all going to happen through a selection change event. Selection change event is when we want to happen. So let's get in there. Now, I've commented the code out, but I'm going to uncomment it out. Okay, this is our sample, but this is the one we're working on here. Right inside the inventory management, I'm going to do control A, and I'm going to uncomment this out. And we're going to go through some of the code here. Okay, so worksheet change event, we're not going to get into that. We're going to focus just yet. Selection change event. Now, the first thing what I want to do, if the target count large, if the user has selected more than one cell, we're going to exit the sub out. All right, if the shape save item button is visible, I want to hide it, right? I don't want this particular save item button. I only want to display it when the user makes a selection on a very specific cell. So the first thing we want to do is hide both of them. And we could do that through here. If it's visible, then hide it using MSO false. On the customer selection, when a user selects on a customer, if they make a selection on anywhere from P all the way through W, we want to make sure that P has a value. If P has a value, then do something. First of all, take whatever the row that they've selected and put it in B10, right? We want that row to come into B10. That's the select row. So when I make a selection here, I want the row that they've selected. That's going to trigger the conditional formatting. And you saw those buttons line up. How did that happen? Well, let's take a quick look inside there. With the save item button, I want that to appear. Where do I want it to appear? I want it to appear in column X, right? Let's scroll up, column X. I want it to appear right in column X, and I want it to appear on the top row of whatever the row that they've selected. So again, we're putting it in column X on the left side, and I'm moving it over slightly to the right using one pixel. I'm also putting it on the top position, and I'm making sure that it's visible. So we're going to position that save item based on the selected row. However, I don't want the delete button, right? If they're adding a brand new record, when I click add new, what's going to happen? A macro is going to put an N right here. If there's an N and I want to make sure that the current row doesn't have an N. If the current row has an N, I only want to put the save button and not the delete, right? Because this is a new record, theoretically. The user's entering it. There, there's nothing to delete. They can only save it, right? So N means brand new. We only put it in. If it's not new, we're going to put the database row. You saw the row before. We're going to put that in. I'm going to hide that. We don't need that inside here. I'll show you that in a little bit. Don't worry about that. So if X and the target row does not equal N, only show the delete existing records, right? If it's a new record, we do not want to show. There's nothing to delete. Okay, so the delete item button would show up, but it's going to show up a little bit more farther to the right. We don't want them on top of each other. We want that delete button a little farther to the right. So that's all we're going to display that. So that's all we need to do, right? So we're just simply displaying the checkbox. Okay, very, very good. So when it's selected, we want to show it. All right, perfect. I like the way that looks. So that's all that we need to have. Now, what about for suppliers? I pretty much want the same thing. Whoops, I forgot one thing. Let's go back into the customers. What did I forget? Well, what did I forget? I forget to size move but don't size look how they got all stretched out so when this happens why does it happen because we forgot one step so it's good sometimes it's good when you see these right so control one how did it get all stretched out like that well if we go into the picture format we can see instead of point two it's like it should be about point four the entire group so that's point oh that's just the delete basically what we need to make sure is that when we're showing these buttons we need to make sure that both of them and the other one where the other one go it's not gone well how do we find it well if that happens to you it's here save item but the problem is it got reduced so much we can't see it so all we need to do notice the width is zero that's what happens when we forget a step no problem easy to fix but in case you run into this problem that's what's gonna happen so point two picture format Point two. So we want to make sure that we're displaying that. All we need to do is just select on our items and making sure that inside the properties, we've always said move, but don't size the cells. They don't get stretched out. So that's important. We don't want to miss that step like I did. Okay, great. So how do we get it to show up for suppliers? Well, that's going to also be on the selection change event, right? So if we go back inside here under our inventory manager here, that's going to be, this was on customer selection, but what about on supplier selection? It's going to be exactly the same, except we're changing the range and we're displaying it in column AI. So all, everything is the same except for the columns. Same thing with product selection. If we make a selection change on the products, we also want the same two buttons to show up, except they're going to be showing up in column AT. So it's very, very much the same. 
that's just a different value. So they're going to be showing up in column AT for product. So that's all we have to do to get those buttons to show up inside our cells right here where we want them based on whether it's a supplier product or customer okay very good glad we got to show that to you what about when we add a brand new product or add a brand new customer what do we want to happen well what i want to happen is this when i click add new customer i want to determine the next customer id so what is the next customer id it is 12. So I'm going to place that. I want to put that right here. But before we do that, let's make sure, let's see if we can get all the customers to load. I want all the customers. So basically, I want to take all the customers from here and I want to load them up. And I want to put them directly inside this list right here. And I want to put the row numbers located in column X, but I want them hidden. Okay. So how do we do that? Well, I also want to base it. What if the user has put in something like here? What if they've added some additional data here search it i also want to include that so let's go into the customers and let's go into a criteria we need to run an advanced filter now that advanced filter is going to be based on whatever the user has entered if they've entered some information in r4 i want to show the asterisk before it means anything before plus whatever's in r4 and another asterisk and basically that means anything that begins or ends with whatever they've put in now r4 if we go back in we see that r4 is here so that when they search for let's just say they search for betty or be we want to make sure that all the records that contain be will show up we're going to use an advanced filter for that we want the rows to go all the rows that contain that and to go right here these are the results that were going to happen. We want those results to come all the way back inside our inventory management. Now, how does that going to happen? Well, it's going to happen when we make a change to R4. That's called a change event. When the user makes a change, we want something to happen. Let's take a look all the way up here under the worksheet change event, still on the inventory manager here. When the user makes a change to R4, we want something to happen. We're going to run a macro called customer refresh list customer refreshes that is the macro that's going to run that advanced filter it's going to run any information the user has entered in customer name we're going to put that results here if they haven't put anything all the results are going to show up here and we're going to bring that information directly inside these cells here the first thing we want to do is want to clear everything out all the way from p9 all the way through x and down so this particular macro if we want to know where this macro is located we just right click and we go to definition and we see it's going to take us inside the customer macros the first macro that we're going to run is called customer refresh list customer rows long the selected row the last row and the last results row these are going to help us for the macros within this module as i mentioned the first thing we want to do is clear out any data i want to clear out that selected row that customer selected rows in b10 and i want to clear out all the data including whatever's inside column x so we're going to go all the way from p9 through x clearing out the contents we're then going to run an advanced filter on our customer sheet so we're going to run that right here on our customer sheet all the way from our headers from a3 all the way through i our criteria is going to be m2 through m3 and our results are going to come directly inside p2 all the way through x2 so that's what we're going to do right here our advanced filter a3 through i in the last row we're going to determine what that last row based on column a if it's less than four that means we have no data the criteria m2 through m3 and then we're going to have the copy to range p2 through x so that's all of the data there we're going to determine the last results row what is so i need to know how many results are there what's the last row we're going to base on column p the last row is 13 in this case let us know how much data we're going to be bringing over if for some reason the last results row is less than three we're going to exit the sub out however we're going to bring all the data over p9 through x plus six why is it plus six if we take a look inside our inventory manager our first row of data starts on row nine our results row inside our customers is going to show up directly here in row three so we need those a six row differential so we need to add on that so we need to add six and then we're going to bring it over and then we're going to select our row and then we're going to set the active scroll window to nine setting that scroll and so that means if even if we double click here and use tab it's going to automatically load those customers up and all we need to do is just center this here to make them look nice okay so we see that the rows are over I don't really want to see these rows right so how do we get those rows to hide well the best way to do that is just to go all the way down here and set a very specific format 
Now, I'm not going to hide them yet because I want to show you one more thing, but we'll show you. We're going to use some semicolons in the custom format to hide them. But I do want to show you one more feature before we add that, and that's the new row. Okay, so basically all we're going to do is duplicate exactly that for the suppliers. If we take a look inside the suppliers, the change. Oh, I just wanted to show you one thing. So show you that the filter does work. So let's just put in JA here, and we want to see that the filters do work here. So we see all the names that contain JA have showed up. And we see that inside our customers, now it's showing our criteria is JA with the asterisk before and after, the wild cards before and after. Only those results with JA will show up, and that's the way we're going to get that. If we were to clear it out, whoa, let's scroll up and down. That's a freeze pane issue. You see that? Look, if we unfreeze the panes, everything is still there. Before you clicked on that, it's going to look at that refresh. It's kind of weird, huh? It has to do with freeze panes. I've noticed that before. Just I think you can use application screen updating equals true. That would probably fix that. So we're gonna, if that happens again, I'll add that in the code. So what do we have here? So if we want to clear it out, I could add a clear button. Maybe for our Patreon members, you might want to clear, clear it out. So I think we really need a clear button here to clear the filter. And that will just reset the list. Suppliers, same exact thing. It's going to get much easier. Lower suppliers. So if I type in ABC, again, we always want the lower, only ABC. If I hit delete, all of those suppliers are going to come up. Very, very similar. We can move a little faster because this is uh, going to be very, very similar. Inside the invoice manager, any change to AC4, we're going to run supplier refresh. Anything through AN, we're going to run product refresh. And it's exactly the same thing. If I look in suppliers, we have the same criteria, except this is based on AC4 and the results. And the products, again, also M2. Notice the consistency with the cells and the results, also the results coming through P. So we don't need to go over duplicate code. And then the information is going to come here. Okay, so that's it. So it's relatively simple here. Suppliers, products, and again, all we need to do is inside of our products, if we want to search for a product, Delete will clear that and run and display all the products. If we want to show just products that contain AR, it'll do that. Just products that contain AR, clearing the list. Very cool. So we kind of see how we do that. But what if we want to add a new product supplier or a new customer? How do we do that? Or what if we want to update an existing one? Well, we can do, we've got some additional code. So let's take a look back inside the customers. And we see we have customer add new customer save update and customer delete. Let's go in order. What do we, how do we do customer add new? Well, if we remember correctly, we're going to use the same button, this check mark, we're going to use the same button for suppliers, products, or customers. So that means, but I've got separate macros. I've got customer add new. I've got inside the products, I've got product add new. And inside the supplier, I've got supplier add new, right? So I've got three different macros, but I've got one button. How do I run that three different macros on one button? Well, a third macro will help us do that. So inside the menu, I believe I put it in menu here, going to be called, let's see, save item, delete item, not here. Perfect. So save item, that's the one I wanted to show you. Save items to the check. Now we're going to use this to save or update. So this save item is what we're going to be assigning to the checkbox. All we need to do is just determine what is the item type located in B2. The item type should be menu type, right? Shouldn't it be? I don't know. I like that better. I'm going to do item type. I use control F. I'm going to change that. I think it should be menu type. So change it to menu type. Okay, so now that we understand, well, I want to know what menu type replaced all item type would work, but that's okay. So menu type is going to be based on B2. If the menu type is customers, we're going to run the macro customer save update. If the menu type is suppliers, so on and so forth. So you kind of get the idea. So we're using select case based on whatever's in B2 to run the associated macro. And so it is this macro that must be assigned to that button that we've added. So we're going to right click here. And then I'm just going to hit N, and then I'm going to paste that in here called save item. And that way, if I decide I'm going to change Betty White to Betty uh, White Smith, maybe she got married at her old age, and I want to update that, right? So I'm just going to put the check mark, and that's going to automatically update that. So if I, let's say if I refilter her name, and it just shows it, so we see that her updated name automatically got saved. So how are we going to do that? So let's clear that out. So we see that it got saved. So how are we going to do that? What if I want to create a new one? I'm going to see run. So this is the macro customer save update that just got ran. How do we know that? Because the menu type is customers and it ran this macro. So going back inside our customer macros, customer 
save update. That's the one I want to go to. We're going to focus on the inventory manager. I want to know the selected row of that customer. That's very important. B10 holds that. I want to know what row we're on. B10 holds that selected row. Notice the row changes because that's the one we're going to be saving. How do we save it? Well, we can simply just get that selected row. If it's zero, we can exit the sub out. I want to know is it a new record or not. When I click add new, it's going to put a new N right here. So if it's and that means that we know no database row has been assigned to it. However, the database rows, see these rows, they come directly over from here. They come over, so I know what row it's on. So I know that Betty White is saved on row four. That's why it's so important to put the row inside our original data because Betty White, we know what row. So now it says Betty White Smith because we know we've updated. I know what row. So to do that, it's very important that we understand the row. And of course, that can be hidden and this will be hidden. And I'll show you how to do that in a moment. But so I need to differentiate. If it's N, no row has been assigned. We need to extract the first row, get the first available row would be 15 to put that. So how are we going to do that? Well, the first thing what I want to do is I want to make sure that is get that first available customer row for new records. The first available row inside the customers a999 and XL plus row. That's the first available row. First available row. Once I know that first available row, I also want to get the database row. What is the set customer? I'm going to set that. I'm going to place that database row directly inside X. So that database row, so I know. So instead of it N, it's not going to be an N anymore. It's, we're going to change it to the actual database row, putting that in X. Then also what I want to do is inside the customers, only for new records, I want to take the row and put the row right here. That's only for new records. We only need to do that once. Okay, next up, what I also want to do, I want to make sure that the ID that is at play, but we can do that ID automatically with all the records. What if it's an existing customer? Existing. So existing customers, it's how do we know? Because it's not an and in control. Existing customers already have a customer row associated in column X. So now we know it's customer. So now we have all the information inside here, our inventory manager. So any changes, so the rest is easy. All I need to do is just simply copy and paste whatever is here and place it directly inside here, all the way here up until column H. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing. So going to use A and the customer all the way through H and the customer row. This is inside our customer sheet is equal to whatever's in P and the selected row through W. So it's simply equal to whatever's in uh, P all the way through W. And so all I need to do is just make a change here. If I change this to street and then just click the check box and then automatically it's going to be saved. And so we see that John James inside the customer has now changed to street. So it's very, very easy to make updates just like that, whether it's a new. So we've gone over how to save it. But what if I want to add a brand new customer? Well, I've got a button here and I've already got a macro associated with this. So we're going to click assign macro and I'm going to do customer add new. Now, what do we want when this happens? Well, when I want when this happens is when I click here, I want to take the first available, the next available customer ID, and that's going to be located in B11. So that next customer is 12. I want to put a 12 right here. And I also want to put an N right here. I'm going to find the first available row. So it's going to do something like this, and it's going to do something like this here. So that's how we do it. So then when we select on that, we see that we only have the check. That's exactly what we want inside the macro. I'm going to refresh that list. So let's take a look inside that customer new. It's very easy called customer add new. So first of all, we're going to refresh the customer list just what I did. So when I click add new, it's going to refresh that customer list. I also wanted to scroll. What if it's a really, really long list? What if we have 50? We don't want to scroll all the way down. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll close to that so we can see that. Not all the way. I don't want necessarily the last row, but I want to see a little bit of the data. So it's kind of a nice feature. So see how it did that automatically. So the first thing, we're going to run the macro refresh list, which you already saw. The selected row is going to be based on the first available row, which is P999 plus one. That's the selected customer row. Inside B10 is that selected row. We want to know what selected row B10 is going to take that on. We're going to put that. So whatever the row has been selected, we're going to put that directly inside B10, that brand new row. 20, you see it goes here. Okay, so next up, what I want to do is I want to put and the and inside column X and whatever the selected row is. I also want to set the next customer ID. That next customer ID is going to go directly in column P. And you see how conditional formatting, formatting makes it get white with that blue border. 
and also we see that we have that all white so that's only for those that contain the n okay q i'm simply going to select it right when i click add new i want to make sure it's selected here so i want to select so that you can start typing in the name and then all i want to do is active window scroll p and x lab minus three and met basically that's going to go the last available row the last row of the value minus three which will get us right about here one two three plus the selected row that's going to be it so now we can put in any name so we can put in fred flintstone fred fredder's cousin okay and we could i don't need to put in the rest and just check and it's automatically going to be added here so now we look in the customers and we see fred flintstone has been added so it's a great way and quick way to do it now we've done exactly the same on supplier so if i click add new supplier i'm going to right click this we need to sign the macro and that's going to be supplier add new we're clicking here and so when we click here we want to make sure that we're going to add that new supplier here and we've added it right here okay very cool what about products if i want to add a product i'm going to do the same thing here right click assign the macro this training is going to be long products add new if you do like these workbooks and you want to support this training and you a great way to do that is with the 250 workbook templates i get 250 of my best templates all in a single zip file along with that i've got each one of them contains pdf codebooks so you can fully understand and look over all of the code i've wrapped it all up in a code library so you've got a whole list of those workbooks a single click to open the workbook a single click to view the training it is one of the best learning tools out there for developing applications in excel no reason to start your own when you can start with my templates to create any application you want to that's the 250 workbook zip pack i'll include the link down below that would be great if you could pick it up okay continuing on so add a new product we want to add a new product we've already got that here very very simple so customers suppliers products that's pretty much it now it is exactly the same we don't necessarily need to go over all the training in other words we don't need to go over uh product macros because it's add new product refresh list save and update the only thing i want to do is cover delete what if i want to delete let's go back to customers deleting is going to be there so i'm going to we haven't assigned this macro yet so i'm going to go into the assign macro and i want to delete a record so we're going to scroll down here called delete item clicking ok now if we take a look where is that located that particular macro is located inside our menu macros and delete item again we're going to use select case based on if it's customers we're going to run this macro if it's suppliers we're going to run this and product so each one has its own delete relatively simple how do we know if it's a delete all i want to do is if i want to delete fred flintstone i'm going to click here are you sure you want to delete this customer if i say no nothing's going to happen if i say yes it's going to delete that customer refresh the list and it's no longer there how does that happen going inside the customer macros delete customer we're going to get this are you sure you want to delete this customer you just saw this if uh if it's no we're going to exit the sub out the selected row is going to be whatever's in b10 if it's zero we're going to exit the sub if the invoice if it's new what if it's a brand new it should never this the delete button shouldn't come up but if it does we're simply going to skip deleting any row meaning it's and there's no database that's associated with this although this should never happen why shouldn't it happen because it shouldn't happen because when i select there's no delete there's no delete button on this so it shouldn't happen right so the delete only appears for the existing ones not the new ones which is kind of a nice feature but if it is then we're just going to go to not saved we're going to skip that and go down to here however if it is we're going to extract the customer row based on column x and we're going to delete the entire row in the customers then we're going to simply going to run the macro to refresh the list and that's all you have need on how to delete a macro all right very very cool so that's the delete it's exactly the same for the suppliers and products let's get to purchases and sales orders i've got some really cool things the first thing what i want to do is add a new order so that's a macro so let's click this and then hold the control i want to assign a macro to this and it's going to be called order add new so i'm going to go into the assign macro and we're going to scroll down to order and click here add new we might as well assign the rest of them so we're going to right click here and here go down to n here you can use n or shortcut order print here for that one and then this one's going to be called order save and update so i'm going to right click here assign the macro order save update and then lastly we're going to be able to delete the order holding down the control and and then order and this one is going to be delete okay so we've assigned all the macros to the buttons now what happens when we click new i want to clear all the contents and i want to set the current date there so how are we going to do that 
Well, that's with the macro called order add new. So inside the macros, order macros, order add new is the first one that we're going to go over. Now, the nice thing about it is that this same macro is going to be used for whether we're on purchases or sales. So that's going to be really great. Okay, so first, when we create an add new, I'm just going to clear out a bunch of cells. We're clearing out all the cells that are associated with that, including the search, including the supplier or the customer. The, uh, we're going to clear out all the products description. However, not the total because that's going to be a formula. What kind of formula should we add? Well, I want to make sure that there's going to be a value in both the quantity and the purchase. So let's do that equals if and the quantity does not equal empty. And we also want to make sure that our purchase price or sales price is not equal empty. So again, G9 does not equal empty. Okay, so in that case, what do we want to do? I want to multiply the quantity times the purchase price times the purchase price okay so that's it but what if it is empty if it is empty all we're going to do is just going to put that couldn't put double quotes okay and then end parentheses okay so that's the formula that i want now i'm going to take this i'm going to put it all the way down so i'm going to copy this and we're going to go let's say we're going to go to h108 h108 that's going to allow enough rows for that and then i'm just going to scroll up here and then i'm going to paste the formulas here I'm going to paste in those formulas. Okay, so we want to make sure that we are not uh, going to erase that. So the formulas in here, and that just means as soon as we put a quantity and we put in the purchase price, that we automatically add that. And of course, if we update the quantity, it's all going to be updated. Okay, I like that. Okay, very good. However, what we also want to do is when we're adding that, before we add it, I want to add in a product. So let's go over the add new first thing. So we got to clear out all those rows. We're clearing out, I also, inside column I9, I want to associate the database row that's associated with this. What do I mean by database row? If we see we've got a separate table called order items. Now, this is based on order ID, it was a purchase, this is the product, description, the quantity, and you see the database row, that's row four, five, and this goes on item row nine, 10, 11, and 12, meaning here, nine, 10, 11, and 12. So I need to know the database row, this is important, it's gonna be hidden, it's gonna go here, but I also wanna make sure to clear out nine. Okay, so we're gonna clear that out, and I wanna know the next order ID. So that means when I click new order, that next order ID, whatever that next order ID, I wanna put it directly inside B4. So that way the purchase order, same thing if we have a sales order, right? We click add new, I wanna make sure it shows sales order 40. So I'm gonna put that next, as soon as I put it inside B4, you see this updates automatically. If it's a purchase, it's gonna be purchase order number. If it's sales order, it's gonna be sales order number. Okay, so that's gonna go in there. That's gonna trigger that string that's dynamic. Then I want to set the current date in H4. And I'm going to select E5. Okay, so that's all we're going to do. So that way when we have a customer, but now when I select a customer or I select a supplier, I want to make sure that the address automates down here. How do I do that? Well, that's going to be on a worksheet change event, E5, E5. But I need to know, is it a customer or is it a supplier? So on a change up E5. So it's a worksheet change. We go back in the inventory manager. We're going to focus on the worksheet change event. So we're going to focus on E5, on customer or supplier name change. If the user makes a change on E5 and E5 is not empty, do the following. We're going to dimension the name row as long. So if B2 equals sales order, if it's a sales order, then we know it's a customer. Otherwise, it's a supplier. What if it's a customer? The name row, we're going to look it up. I want to look up this customer name. And we're going to look it up inside the customer named range. We're going to locate it using the target. The target value is whatever the user has entered. And I want to extract the row. If it's not zero, that means it's been found. We're going to take whatever's in column C of the customers. What's column C? If I look in column C, that is the address. So I'm going to put that. I want to put that address. I want to put it directly inside cell E6. Inside cell E7, what I want to do is I want to take the city, state, and zip columns D, E, and F, and I want to combine them, separate them by a comma and a space, and put them directly there. And that's the next line of code. E7 is going to take on D, E, and if we scroll over, we see F. So it's going to take on all of that, and it's going to separate it by a comma and a space. So otherwise, what if it's a supplier? The name row, we're going to look up. This time, we're looking up in supplier names. I'm going to look it up. I want to know the supplier row. So this is the supplier database row. This would be the customer database row. Customer. Okay, so we can extract both of those. As long as that's not zero, we should probably add on air resume next. Oh, I've added it up here and down here. Okay, so on air, this should be go to zero. Go to zero. 
Okay, and that just means if it's not found, then we can skip it. So, all right, continuing on. So basically, all we're going to be doing is the same. The address, this time, is going to be the supplier address, and then the supplier city, state, and zip. So that's all. So how does that happen? So then, if we take a look back inside, we're on sales order. So if a customer gets added, that customer address automatically gets added. If we're on purchases and we select a, a supplier, that supplier address automatically gets added just because it's the change event on there so we can automate that very very cool okay very cool i'm glad i got to show it to you there's some more i want to do now when i select a product here i want the description automatically and either the purchase price or the sales price if we're on a purchase order i want the purchase price if we're on a sales order i want the sales price if we take a look inside our products here we have both I have a purchase price and I have a sales price. The purchase price is in column E, the sales price is in column F. So we can take a look at that. And that's gonna happen on a change of D, anywhere from D9 all the way to down. So let's take a look at that. And that's gonna be up here, on order item change load details, but not an order load. What does that mean, but not an order load? And that means when I'm loading an order, if I put in an order number and all the products load on that order, that kind of change, I do not want to automate the description quantity price. I only want to automate it when the user manually. So we can differentiate that with using this right here, B3. So B3 is usually false, right? So as long as this is false, it's going to automate. Okay, so it's going to be, it's only going to go true when it loads and back. Okay, so let's take a look at that. If, okay, user makes selection and B3 is false, we want to make sure that we're going to dimension the item database rows long and the selected rows long. The selected equals the target row. So that's a nice spelling. The selected row there. So we want to make sure that we know the selected row. It's going to be the target row. Putting that into a variable, it's a little bit easier. If the target value does not equal empty, we want to do something. If it doesn't equal empty, I want to automate the description, put in the quantity and the purchase or sales price. If it is empty, I want to clear it all out. So if it's not empty, we're going to do the following. I'm going to extract the row. I need to know what item database row. That's the product database row. What row? I'm going to look up the product name, and I'm going to determine what row is on. That's important because I need to extract the description. And I need to extract either the purchase price or the sales price. So we need to get that row. We can look it up using the product name, find the target values, look in the values, and extract the row. As long as if it's equal to zero, let the user know, please select a correct product from the dropdown list. And we're going to exit the sub. If it's not zero, we can automate that. That means f the description from column C is going to go directly inside column E. So column E is going to take that on. And F is going to sit, set that default quantity to one. Now, but what about our purchase price? I need to know if it's purchases, this is going to be a purchase price. If it's a sales order, it's going to be a sales price. So we need to differentiate that. If B2 equals sales order, then we need to, it's a sales, we need to enter the sales price. Sales price is going to come from column F of our products. If it's a purchase, we're going to do the purchase price. And the purchase price is going to come from column E. So again, we're just simply adding the purchase price or the sales price. And that way, when we select a product, the description, the quantity, and the purchase price. However, notice that Arla Mild Cheddar, right? If we're on a sales order and we select that same Arla Mild Cheddar, we see that it is the sales price that got added. So the price is going to be dynamic based on the type of order, whether it's a sales order or whether it is a purchase order. Okay, good. So we understand that. Else, what if they've cleared the fields, right? If I have an existing order here or existing item here and they decide to clear the fields, I want to clear the fields out. So I want to remove the description, the quantity, and price. I want to make sure that the total doesn't get cleared out because that's based on a formula. Okay, so that's all we need to do is just clear out E through G. We're going to clear the row out. Okay, great. So we've been on the change events. So for those two change events, great. So we've also been on add new order. But what about load an order So or save an update? Let's continue on our order macros. So we've been on order add new. But what if I want to save an update? Right. So I'm going to enter. Let's go ahead and enter a purchase. I'll go ahead and add a vendor here. I will add in some products here that we're going to be purchasing. And I also want to make sure to explain to you on the totals. And we got to update, we're going to update the formulas here. Subtotal, what's that going to be? Well, let's add in the formula. Subtotals is simply going to be the sum of what's in the totals. So the subtotal is going to equal the sum of what? Of everything in this row all the way to, I think we went to 108. Okay, so the subtotal is relatively easy. But what about the tax? Well, the tax is going to be based on two conditions. Here inside, are we charging? sales tax on our sales orders 
Are we paying sales tax on our purchase orders? And if so, what is the percentage? So we're going to differentiate. We need to know whether. So I've given some name trade. This is called purchase tax option, and this is called purchase tax. This is called sales tax option, and this is called sales tax. So I've given some name range to help us in the formula. So equals if this is equal to purchase, equal to purchases, we know we're on a purchase order. Purchases, so we'll do purchase. Okay, purchases, then what are we going to do? I need to do another if statement. If the purchase tax option equals yes, then we know we need to change. So yes, then what are we going to do? We're simply going to take the subtotal and we're going to multiply it times the tax rate, times the tax rate. So it's going to be the purchase tax rate. Okay, what if it's not? Okay, so what if it's false, then we're simply going to enter empty. What if it is false? What if this is false? We're going to do, that means it's not purchases. It is a sales order. Again, we're going to run it if sales tax option. This is for sales order. Sales tax option equals yes. Then what we're going to do, multiply the subtotal. This time it's going to be by the sales tax amount. Otherwise, if it's not empty. Okay, that's it. So that's the formula we're going to have. So that's going to add in that tax, that sales tax or purchase tax automatically. And then the total is simply equal to the sum of the two. So we could just add the sum of both the subtotal and the tax accordingly. Okay, great. So now we have our total fields. That's looking really good. Saving our work as we do. So we've got our total back. When we save it. So now when I save this, I want to make sure that we save it. I'm going to look in this field here. If this has not been saved, we know these items have not been saved. But what if the purchase order? I know if there's no row associated with this order, that means order 40 has not been saved. So if we look inside here, our orders, we see that the last order created was 39. 40 has not been created. So we need to create a brand new row for that. That's going to be an order, save, and update. So let's go through that macro right now. Okay, so inside this macro, we want to first determine, uh, is it purchases or sales? So we're gonna, I need an order type. An order type is a string variable. Inside this string variable, we need to make sure that we've set it. Why is that important? Because I need to make sure that inside the orders, our second column's order type, I need to place that there. Very, very important so we understand between sales and purchases. Okay, so we're gonna set the order type based on whatever's in B2. If it's purchases, I'm going to set the order type to purchases and the name type to supplier. The name type will be important soon. If it's sales, I want the order type as the sale and the name type as customer. Okay. Now what we want to do is I want to determine if B9 is empty. Why is that important? B9 is going to tell us whether it is a customer or supplier row. Right? Remember, I need to save this information. I need to know what row is on that customer supplier. Is it a supplier or is it a customer? And make sure that there's a row associated with that. Okay, if B9 equals empty, please make sure to enter a correct name type. I want to put whether I want to put let the user know a customer or supplier from the drop down list. I do not want them to be able to save an order without actually entering either a customer or supplier here. So that's ensured that they do. We're going to select E5 and we're going to exit the sub out. Is it a new order or not? How do we know if B5 is blank? We know it is a new order. So if B5 is empty, it is a brand new order. We're going to set the order row to the first available order on the order sheets, so the first available row. Again, inside that, we're going to set B4 is, going to, is, of course, our brand new order number. We're going to place that in column A of our orders. We want that to show up directly. That first row is going to be that. So this is going to take on 40. Okay, and then I want to place in the type here. I want to put in the name, the date, and the total amount. I'm going to put that, all that in. That's very important. So that's exactly what we're going to do in the next lines of code. However, if it's an existing order, all we need to do is extract the existing order row directly from B5. So that's existing order database row. Once we have that, we can then place, I did not use uh, data mapping. Some of you see that we use data mapping, but there's only a few fields, so I didn't. B is gonna take on the order type. C is gonna take on either the customer or the vendor name. The date is gonna be in column D, and the total is gonna be in column E, that's it. Okay, so that saves all this information, the supplier or the customer, the date, and the total here, the total is going to come from H7. So that's going to take on that. Okay, but what about the items? Now, when I 
items, I need to loop through all the items. I need to determine the last row, in this case it's 11. I'm gonna look in column I. If I contains a number, I know that it's already been saved. If I is empty, we are going to then add a brand new database, and that's gonna be saved in this order items database. Inside this database, we wanna know the order ID, the type, the product, the description, quantity, price, total, the row that's associated, that's the item row. That means so that I can place it directly back in row nine, back in row 10, or back in row 11 when we load it up, and the database row. It is that database row that we're gonna be placing in column I here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is determine that last item row based on column D. If it's less than nine, that means there's no items been saved. If it's greater, then we're gonna run a loop. The item row is simply equal to nine all the way to the last item row. Okay, if, again, we're gonna check, now this is where I wanna check, if I look in column I and I see that it's empty, I know that this line has not been previously saved. So we need to add a brand new database row. If I equals empty, it's a new database item. I need to get the first available database row based on our order items. And I also wanna set inside that, in column A, I wanna set the order number. In column B, the order type. H is the item row and I is the row. So what does that mean? That means inside our order items, inside column A, the order ID, B, the order, this is only for new items, and I wanna make sure that H is the row that's associated and B and column I is the database row. We're gonna use the formula and that way if something gets deleted or cleared, that the rest automatically update. Okay, very good. So now that we've done that for those items, for new items, what if it's an existing item? Oh, so lastly, I wanna take that for new items and I wanna put that database row and I'll put it directly inside column I. It'll be hidden eventually. Existing, if it's an existing, all we need to do is extract the item database row from column I. That's gonna be the existing order items database row. Okay, next up, all we need to do in a single line, just copy and paste all the information all the way from the product description, quantity and purchase price, and place it directly inside our order items from here, B, C, D, and all the way to the price, okay? And of course, we can place the total in there too. We can put that total inside there. When we bring it back, we don't need to bring the total because the, the formula will take care of it. So all the way from G through B, we're just gonna, that's gonna come directly from columns D through H, and that's exactly, or D through, uh, yeah, D through H, and gonna be, D through H is gonna go directly into columns C through D. That's it, that's all we need to do is save the items. Okay, great, and then we're just gonna give a message saying ordered, type save. So that means when we press save and update, it's going to save it. It's going to add those numbers here. Purchase save. If I expand this column, we'll be able to see those numbers. We've got the database row numbers. We know it's been saved. If we look in the orders here, we go all the way down. We see that order number 40 uh, has been saved here. We'll center the uh, numbers there. It's a purchase. We've got the vendor here, supplier, and the date and the total. If I look in the order items, we see we scroll down to the bottom. We see order number purchase. We see the items and the totals. And everything is now filled in here. Okay, very good. So we've got all that data just the way we want it. We're now able to save our orders. What about if we want to print an order or delete an order? We can do that as well. So the next one is load. Loading is important, right? When do we load an order? Well, I load an order when I enter the proper order number. We just added 40. If I add a new order, that clears everything out but I wanna load that order back up. How do I do that? Well, if I hit 40, notice that order loads all up. That's gonna happen on a change event. K4 is gonna make it where it happens. So if I go to Invoice Manager here, and I go scroll down here to K4, that's gonna be the change event. Remember, we're under Worksheet Change Event. And K4 does not equal empty. What I wanna do is I wanna look. Remember, I have a row that's associated, the search order row. I know that if B8 is not empty, there's a correct row because this is based on whatever order number the user has placed in K4. So the first thing, the only thing I wanna make sure of is if they enter it, if they enter something that is, let's say a sales order, I think two, uh, I think number two is a sales order, right? If this is a sales order, notice we're on purchases. Order number entered is a purchase order. Actually, I should say sales order. It's a sales order, not a purchase. Please select on purchase and okay, I gotta fix that. So this is a sales order. The idea is to go here and I just gotta update the message and just do this here and I'll, I'll change that in a minute. So, cause it's a sales order. Notice we're under sales order, right? So number two is a sales order. Number one's a purchase order. So I wanna make sure that they've entered a sales order and not a purchase order. If I try to enter 40 here, we know that that's a purchase order. 
so this is correct so this this message but the order number entered is a sales order it's opposite and so i'm just going to switch those message box it's a little bit confusing so basically i want to make sure that we're on the right track here okay so that's exactly what we're going to do so basically when we change it as long as b8 is a value if they have entered something incorrect we're going to let them know if i try to enter something that doesn't exist we're going to let them please enter a correct order id so we know that that doesn't exist okay so that message box is going to come up we could probably clear the contents range k4 dot clear content so we're going to clear the fields clear contents okay clearing the field if they've entered something correct incorrect okay so otherwise what we're going to do is i want to take that order id whatever order id they just entered because it's now correct and i want to place it directly inside b4 so b4 is going to take out whatever's in k4 so here b4 equals k4 and then we're going to run a macro called order load that's the macro that i want to go over with you now called order load first thing we're going to do is clear out some fields all the fields associated to that if b5 equals empty then mets please enter a correct order to load in case there's current okay we want to get the order row what is the order row associated and i want to know the order type this is important so this is actually purchase so this would be purchase okay if the order type is purchased okay so basically i want to extract that and i'll show you that order type is going to come from b right we know the row we know that the order type is directly in column b right here so i want to know that order type so if we go back in there i want to make sure that we've associated so i'm going to update this as i did to order type so this is going to be purchased mb2 equals sales order sales order there we go that's wrong then the is a purchase order please select on purchase order okay perfect so let's take a look at that if the order type equals sales I'll just had this backwards want to let the user know sales and purchase order i know it looks the same but it's not purchases that was the issue okay so basically we want to make sure that you're so we know we just entered a sales order if i enter 40 we know that that is a purchase order so the order number is a purchase order please select on purchases and enter that again that's exactly what i want purchases entering that purchase order because it's a purchase order so that it'll show up okay so we're just letting the user know to make sure that they've selected okay then what i want to do is i want to set e5 to whatever's the name whatever name is located in column c i'm going to put that directly in e5 and i also want to put what is in h4 the date now remember the total is automatic all we need to do is enter the date and enter the name and then of course we're going to load now we need to load the items associated with that and that's what we're going to do we're going to load the items so what we want to do is i want to load all the items associated with order order 40. we know order 40 is located in b4 so if i look in the order items here and i have an advanced filter and i only want to know the items associated with 40 all i need to do is just create a link to b4 and i've done that right here this is our criteria running an advanced filter only those items associated with order number 40 will appear right here and that's exactly what we're going to do the last row if it's less than four we're going to exit the sub out of our order items focusing just on the order items here an advanced filter our criteria is m2 our results are going to go p2 through x2 determine the last results row if it's less than three we're going to exit the sub we're going to run a uh, loop from three to the last results row that item row is going to be in column w that item row is very important i need to know if i'm going to place it in 9 10 or 11 right we need to know what row to place it in 9 10 or 11 very important so we have that so then what i want to do is i want to then bring in all the information d all the way through not the total d all the way through g is going to be i'm going to place that that's going to come directly from here right here r through you r through you bring the total not the total because it's automated then lastly i want to bring in that database row in x so two lines of code to do just that d through g equals r through v r through v actually it should be r through u should not be v right because we want to make sure we don't need to bring in that total okay so that's correct we don't the total is a formula we don't want to bring that in okay now what we want to do inside i just want to bring the database row it's going to come directly from x so we're bringing it here so we want to bring in that total here i want that database row to come in column i and that's going to come directly from x of course 
that's all we need to do to make sure that the database row is associated and that's important because if we make a change we want to make sure it's updated okay or to delete the last macro that we go before we get to the dashboard that's going to be cool inventory deleting the order basically all i need to do is know is there a row that's associated if there is row 43 we know what row to delete and then we also want to delete the associated rows or clear the contents of the associated rows on our items so that's exactly what we're going to do Given the user the option, are you sure you want to delete this order? If B5 is empty, meaning it's not saved, we can skip deleting the row. Order row is going to be equal to B5. We're going to delete the entire row from the orders. And then we're going to delete the order items or clear out the order items. So focusing on the order items. Again, we're going to run the exact same advanced filter right here, getting the results. And this time what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be turning the database row and I'm going to clear out the contents. So if I'm clearing out 120, basically all i'm doing instead of deleting the entire row which could create issues sometimes i'm simply going to clear out the contents and then resort the list and that's what we've been doing lately to do that we're going to get the last row running our advanced filter exactly as we just did determining the last row we're going to run the loop just as we did before from three all the last row extracting the database row from column x very important item database row is going to be an x okay and then column a through i we're going to clear the contents it's going to clear it out so we can clear the contents out i like that better than delete but we just have to be careful that we don't want we really never want uh, spaces with data so to do that we really should to make sure that we resort the list so that we can remove those blank rows and that's what we're going to do next sort remaining fields to clear the blank rows sorting by id so we're going to use the sort clear the fields and the add a key the order items a4 okay that's our order id we're going to sort ascending our range is going to be a4 all the way to the last row and then all we need to do we've all determined it apply that sort and then just run order add new Printing, very, very easy. So that's all we need to do. So inventory, deleting it. We can delete an order just by that. Very, very simple. Okay, very, very cool. Let's move these up a little bit just because I want to make sure that they're below that line. Okay, I like that. Okay, very, very nice. So we know how we can delete an order. If you want to do, let's go ahead and delete this order. Make sure it's work. Are you sure you want to delete this order? Yes, deleting the order is going to clear everything out automatically. Going to go into the add new stage. And if we take a look inside our orders, we go down here, 40 is gone. If we look in our order items, we see that order items associated with that are no longer here and everything's been sorted properly okay very good so we see that delete order works just fine make sure we save our work now what we want to do is we want to print the order so let's go ahead and put in i think 33 i don't remember which order is which okay that looks pretty bad <laughs> let's go ahead and add that in here okay all right i like that get some saving and updating that's order 33 we have uh, because i created a lot of fake data orders so that's why we had kind of weird rows okay that looks better so we see that order number what i want to do do now is i want to print this order that's associated so if i click here i want to determine the last row and i want to start the print range from d4 all the way to the last row and then print the order and it'll print to the default printer so if i click print it's going to print to my snag it it's going to go to snag it. it's going to print this order right here how do we do that okay well we're going to determine the last row based on column d that's the last row we want to know that last row we're going to set that print range so that page setup that print area is going to start out in d4 it's going to go all the way through h and we want the last row then all we need to do is just print it out now if we want to see what we're printing we can do here we're going to we don't need the from and to we just want to make sure we're going to use the active printer we could set a specific printer here if we wanted to we're going to print the file no we're going to leave that blank collate we're going to leave that blank we want to ignore print areas false so we do want to honor those print areas that's it for print okay very very cool that is it for for us now we're ready to take on the dashboard so we've covered customers suppliers products purchases sales orders and now we're going to go over an incredible dashboard so i've got a, a blank space it's going to debug it because of course we haven't created this dashboard group yet which is fine i'm going to comment that out we will be creating that very very soon that's going to be a group of shapes that we're going to focus on the dashboard okay so when i click on dashboard again we're not going to get that error all we have is a blank area all right to help us create the dashboard we've got some data and it's going to be located on a sheet called dashboard data so i've prepared this data to make it a little bit easier for you i've got total sales by month for the current year i've got the, the total sales by the current month so it means every day 
all the purchases and sales. I've got the top products by hand. We need a pivot for that. All the top products and how many we have of those. And also, I want the profit, the profit per the month, and of course, the profit per the year. And I'm going to put those all into some charts and data inside that. So let's go, go ahead and start with that. Let's, let's do the total sales by month. So basically, what I want to know is I want to know all the sales. We don't have any sales in November, December. I want to know all the sales by month. So I'm going to insert here, click on insert, and I want to put in, we'll put in a something like a 2D bar chart for this total sales by month. This is pretty easily here. So I'm going to total sales. I want to make a dynamic header. So I'm going to use equals. I'm going to be total sales by month because it's changed automatically. So great. So how do we get this data? So let's take a look at the data. We're going to use the upper total sales by month and I want the year of today. That's going to get us the current year. Perfect. How do we get the total sales for January? Now, remember, I've got some named ranges that we went over. We'll review. I want to know the order total. Remember, that's the, all the total orders. That named range is based on all of them here. I've got order totals. I've got named ranges for order type. And I've got named ranges for order date. So all of that will really help us inside this data. So to do that, we're going to use the sum ifs. I want to sum the order total. And it's going to be based on type. I want to know only sales only sales type. And I want to base it on a very specific date. I want it only for January. January's month number one. We are in row number three. Notice we're on row number three. So by knowing that, it's going to help us out. I want to know basically greater than the first of January of the current year. So we're going to use the date feature. The year is going to be the year of today. What's the month? The month is for month number one. How do I get the month number from the row? If I know the row is three and I subtract two, that's going to get us one. And that way, if we copy down the formula, it's the month numbers are going to grow, which is exactly what I have. So this will give me month number one. And I want the first day of the month. But I also want it less than or equal to the last day of the month. So I'm going to use that same date here, the same January date, except this time I'm going to wrap it in EO month. That's going to be the end, the last day of the month, EO month. And that's going to give us the exact month. We don't want months before or after, so we're going to put zero here. If I hit enter, that's going to automatically calculate that. By copying and pasting these formulas down, if we copy and bringing these formulas down, we can simply extrapolate that for every single month, the total sales for each month. So now we understand how we get the data and we get the data in here. So total sales by month. Okay, that's pretty much it the way we want. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do control X and then I'm going to go into our inventory management. I'm going to do control V. Okay, so I want total sales by month. I'm going to bring it up here a little bit and I'll bring it all the way down here because it's going to be, I don't want it that far. But uh, okay, that's about right. So that looks good. I'm going to give this a little bit of an update so it looks good. So we're going to go, I'm going to drop this down because we're going to be using it a little bit. So for this, I'm going to give it, we can give it some color theme. So I'm going to give it a color about like this. That'll give it the color theme. It's already there on that. The format, we're going to give, we don't want any fill on that. So we'll go to no fill. And we also don't want any outline. So we'll go to no outlines on that. I'm going to give it the text. I want the same color as our, so the text fill is going to be this. And I'm going to make that a bold. So we're going to do the bold on the text fill. And also for this text, I'm going to increase the font and also give it that same color and also do a little bold so we can see it out. Okay, that looks nice. I'm going to get rid of these grid lines. I really don't need them. I'm going to hold that and just del use delete. That's going to get rid of them. I want a little bit updated look and feel for these bars. And I also want to show the data labels. So I'm going to right click here. I'm going to add the data labels on that. So we'll click add data labels. So I want to format these data labels. Again, increasing that and then bolding that. So that's going to give us a nice look on that. Okay, very good. So now that we have that, but this bar, I want to make it a little bit uh, nicer. So I'm going to go into the format. Also, we can use control one for that. And we're going to give it the fill. And we don't need the color on that. So what is that fill going to be? I'm going to use, uh, let's select on this one again. That's what I want. Okay, so the fill is automatic. That's sufficient. Making sure I don't necessarily need to border. So no line on that. Here, what I want to do is I'm going to give it a little bit of a shadow on that to make it stand out a little bit, the lower right shadow. And also inside, we can do, uh, let's do 3D format here and we'll do a bevel on that. Okay, that looks really nice. I like the way that that looks. If we want to show a little bit, we can show a little bit less of gap width to make those a little bit bigger. Looking very, very nice. Okay, I like the way that that's looking. 
cool okay good what else do we want to have i want to be able to have more than one grass i think that looks really good the way it is we will group it oh we want to add these we don't really need this low and i think that's unnecessary we can remove that okay looking pretty good i'm gonna it's a little bit too tall remove this it looks nice so we can keep it big because when we usually remove the top it's going to expand that whole area okay good that's total sales by month let's go ahead and go to the next one so we're going to go back into the dashboard data and now we're going to go focus on made purchases and sales so i'm going to select on this all the data here and i'm going to insert and why don't we insert let's say a 2d column okay and this is going to cover both purchases and sales so we're going to change the color on this change it to our theme color here the chart title is going to be dynamic and we'll go over the information on how we receive this and the chart title is going to be this may purchases here okay so how did we get this data so basically this is based on a single day of the current month so the purchases are going to use a simple sum if we're basically on an order total order type for only purchases and the order date is going to be based on d3 so the order date is based on d3 if you see d3 it's just a one how do we know that that's a date that's actually a full date so it's just formatted to show a date so if i were to show it in a short date format you would see that's the full date however i've customized the date if i go into the more number formats and i go into the custom I'm going to show a single day so i'm just going to put d and that's going to show that single day that's what i want to show you so how do i get the date so getting the day i can use the day based on that just based on the row number again the date of the current year the month is going to be the current month but what about the day i want the first day of the month in row three if i know it's row three and i subtract two that's going to get us the first day of the month it makes it dynamic based on the row number so that this is the second day and third day and so on and so forth so in actuality this is the day then if i use if i want to know all the purchases made on this day day one i could just do using sum ifs order date based on d3 and if i bring this down it's going to go all the purchases for the current day sales are going to be exactly the same except we're looking for order type sales and not purchases that's how i get all the data and then of course all i need to do is just simply copy that and bring down the formulas here by pasting in those formulas here and that's how it's going to happen okay great so we have all the data that we want for this and now we're ready to format that accordingly so again all we need to do is just click on it use Control x go inventory and then we're just going to paste it right here using Control v and that's going to paste it right there okay we can expand that a little bit so we can do it all the way to say let's say about right here all right so that gives it some nice idea and then we're going to format that accordingly just as we have before so we want to know all the purchases in may dropping this back down here we're going to use a little bit in the format section we are going to no shape fill and no shape border on that the may purchases we are going to uh, color that our same color blue making it bold here just the way we have it everything else also we want to increase the font here and color that blue same thing with the dates here blue and increasing the font to size 10. getting rid of these grid lines inside it we really don't need those and i do want to expand that i'm going to select on this giving the this color making sure that it's set on our unique color which it already is that's good selecting on it and then using uh let's go ahead and select on this using control one we're going to take a look inside i want to format these if i take a look inside here series options look good that's the way i want it. i'm just going to select on one actually all of them here so how do we do that so what i want to do is i want to give them a little bit of a format on here so individually selecting on them we're going to go inside here and then what i want to do is i'm going to reduce the gap width that's going to increase it a little bit the size of it there we go i like that we've got our legend up here so we're going to put our legend let's put it a little bit above we'll put it up here i like it better there i'm going to format the legend increase that bold it just way nice also color these okay so that's looking really good i like the way that looks but we're going to give it a little bit of the same look and feature that we have also would like to put a shadow on it so we're going to put a slight shadow on it maybe not a full shadow if it looks too much and just a little bit less on the blur and less on the distance here okay so it's going to be slight i also would like to make it so that we're going to add that same 3d format using the same features that looks very nice okay very good i'm still going to reduce the gap width and the overlap here that looks okay okay i like that that looks really nice we have that of course we have more data to help a little bit looking very good so we have our information 
and we want to do the same here. So I'm going to take this. I also want to do the same for our purchases here, adding those in so we can do the purchase as well, giving it that 3D format here, the bevel here. We also want to do that. And of course, that we've already got the gap width. Everything looks really good. Also, we're going to add in the shadow just as we did before on that. OK, very, very good. Bringing this down here and down here. OK, so everything's simple and looks really nice. It's got a nice look. We can see purchases and sales to what else do we want to add? I want to add the top products by value. Top products, I'm going to put them on the right side here. I want to know what, what are the top products. So if I take a look back inside the dashboard data, I've created a pivot here. So if we take a look inside here, we see that we've got a nice little pivot chart here to take a look at the top products on hand by value. And so how do we create that pivot? If we go into the products and take a look, we've created a table out of this. So we've got already a table on that. And if I want to insert, we could take a look here inside a pivot chart, a pivot chart and pivot table. We could do that. And it's going to be based on the products. And we're going to put it in an existing worksheet. And I'm going to select location, although we already have it, inside the dashboard data. And we can place it just right here and click OK. OK, so what that's going to do is insert a pivot. Now what we have here, if we take a look at our existing pivot, we see we've got product name and sum of value and So if we do the same thing, clicking on here, product name beer, bringing it down inside there. It's already there here for us. And also what we want, we want the value on hand. Perfect. That's just the way I like it. But what I want to do is I want to know the top ones. Let's get rid of this chart for now. We're going to build another one in just a moment so you can see every step. Okay, so now we've got data, but I, what I want to know is I want to sort by the top. So how do we do that? If I take a look at this, and we want to summarize values, but I want to sort them. So how are we going to do that? Well, all we need to do is just click right click on any one. What we're going to do is I want to resort and then sort the largest to smallest, the largest to smallest here. So that's going to sort them automatically. Now we want to format those. I really don't want the cents in here. So we really want to format. If we go into the value field settings and we take a look down here and the number format here, we're going to set the number format. It's going to set it. We can set it to currency, but we can set it to no decimals, clicking OK and click OK. All right, so that's going to set up, but I really want to show only maybe the top one. So how do we do that? So we can do some value filters. I want to select that. Oops, that's, that's a little bit below that. Let's go scroll up here so you guys can see it. So we're going to select some value filters. So how are we going to do that? We can select here, this here. We're going to select the value filters and we want the top 10. And we've got the top 10 items, sum of value on it and clicking OK. I also really don't want to show anything with a zero value. So we can go in here and also in the, in the value filters here. And I'm just going to show anything, any greater than value zero. So I'm just going to put zero in here. And that's going to only show those greater than zero. Okay, very good. So that's going to shorten up our list. It's going to only show those. So now what I want to do is I want to create basically another chart for the data that we have here. Okay, so you, now you can see where we are up to this point. So we get all of that information here. I've created a custom title here called Top Products on Hand by Value. Okay, so take a look inside here. What we're going to do is we're going to select this data here, row labels, and we're going to do insert. And we're going to go click here. And I want to make sure we're going to use a 2D barcode. So that looks good. Okay, so I like the way that that looks there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to customize that. And we're going to use the select data. So actually, we can use either one of data, but I'll use the existing data. So I'm going to delete that because this was just a sample. We can use our current. We can delete that. We don't need that. I'm going to use this data right here because that's the one we're, we're focused on. Okay, so we can insert here. Again, look in here, 2D bar chart. We've got that here. All right, good. So I'm going to set that custom header. It's going to be equal to, I'm going to put that right located in H1, top products on hand by value. Okay, that looks very good. We're going to customize that again inside our sheet. I'm going to do control X, then I'm going to go back to the inventory management, and I'm going to do control V right in here. Okay, that's going to bring it in. So we've got all the information here. And we're going to shrink it up and then we're going to customize it. So I'm going to right click here. I don't need to show the field buttons on the charts. We can hide those. I'm going to bring it down here. This could be a lot of products, so I do want to extend vertically. Once we have a lot of products, we're going to show that. All right, this is looking really good. Let's continue to format this. Shape fill, none. We don't need that. No border on that. Just as we've done before, removing the grid lines, which we don't need that. Setting the same formats that we all have, the text here, we want it. We're going to increase the font to 10 on that. And then I'll make them bold and maybe italics on this one. 
This one's going to be here. We want to color that and then bold just as we've done the others here. And OK, I like the way that that looks. That's looking really good. We're going to add something that's a little bit hard to see. We're going to add a background onto that before we go. So inside the color, I want to make sure that it's the same color as our theme, which it is here. And we're going to give it that same style as we have. So I'm going to do Control-1. What that's going to do is going to launch that format here. We can reduce the gap width just a little bit if we want to. We're going to go in the fill here. And also the border is going to be no line. We're going to add some presets on the shadow, just as we've done before here. And also I want to do the bevel, a nice bevel here to give it that little 3D look. Okay, that's looking really good. So we've got to show our top product, but I do want to show them in reverse order. I want to show the highest of the top. So how are we going to do that? Well, if we select on here, we go in here, and we want to make sure that we're going to add in the series options here. So inside there, I want to sort the highest. So I'm going to select here inside our, our text here our axis, and then what we're gonna do is we're going to categorize in reverse order. So I'm gonna select that, and it's gonna reverse order. And I don't need the legend here, so we can remove that. I do want some labels on that. We gotta add labels to the other ones as well, so we don't wanna forget that. So I'm gonna right click here, and then we're going to add the data labels here, formatting those data labels just as we've done before. And there we go. Okay, let's add data labels here. It could get a lot if we do them on here. So I'm gonna add the data labels on this one, formatting those data labels here. But it looks nice, it's got a good look. All right, things are looking really, really good. We've got here, we've got just two more small donuts to add and then we'll be done. I don't think we need this, I think that's a little bit extra on there so we can remove that, that top bar, that chart area. We don't need that, we don't need a legend also. Looking pretty good. Okay, I like that, it's looking really good. Okay, I've got two donut charts I'm gonna be adding up here, one for May profit and one for the year profit. We're gonna get that information here. So if we take a look in the May profit, what I want to make sure of is that we're going to show both the sales and the profit amount and then the profit percentage I want to show in there too. So how are we going to do that? Well, the best way to do that is just select on our data and create that donut. So I'm going to click on holding the control, both month sales and month profit. I'm going to insert here, get a donut chart, clicking on the donut, and that's going to do just that, inserting that donut. Okay, I'm going to bring our legend up here. I'm going to show the legend, but I'm going to show it on top of that. So I'm going to bring it up to the top. I'm bringing this down a little bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and add in that custom chart title. That's going to be equals here, May Profit. All right, very good. I like the way that that looks. And what we can do is we can then customize that. So we're going to go inside our colors here. I want to add our color theme here, making sure that it's a color theme. We can format that here. No shape fill, no borders there on that. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this one, not control X in this case, and I am going to go inside and I'm going to paste it directly inside here. That's going to be our May profit. Now we'll be customizing that accordingly. All right, so let's add a little bit of information here, a little bit of a bigger donut size here. I don't want any borders on that, so we'll go to no lines on that. Also, what I want to do is I'm going to do the same, adding a little bit of a shadow just as we've done before adding a bevel just as we've done before with the rest of it that looks good and then i want to make sure that the font is the same as we have again increasing this to 10 in the blue that looks very nice okay but i want to add the profit percentage i want to add it directly in here so insert shapes text box and i'll put it directly inside here now what's going to be in here i'm going to do equals and i want the profit percentage for may so equals where is it located located directly in here inside l five and i'm going to hit enter what that's going to do is uh, add that in so i'm going to center that giving it a color let's go to 28 or something like that okay centering that inside there that looks really good and should since we've now placed it in it should move with it accordingly so if i move this it should move it automatically okay that's looking really quite nice i like that let's add some labels onto that so we're going to add data labels onto that and i'm going to just bring them a little bit on the outside i want those data labels to just be on the outside so let's go into label options and we can show value from sales series names and uh, that looks pretty good uh, but i just want to bring them out a little bit here and then i want to format them accordingly just as we have ha had before so bold and then increasing that okay so we have some nice data labels we're showing the monthly profit we're showing the profit percentage looking pretty good i think we can reduce the size a little bit here and that looks quite nice. All right, so now all we need to do is just create one more for the annual profit, and we're gonna put it in. So back inside our dashboard data, I've got this here, but what I want to do is I wanna select the data. This data is gonna be a little bit different. 
Instead of this, I'm gonna now change it to year sales and year profit, holding down the control. So that's gonna add in the year data. So now we have our year sales. All I need to do is update the data label here. It's gonna be equal to the 2023 profit here. So adding that in, don't select that again here. Even air, and it's gonna to equal to this one right here, located in N1. Okay, so now we have that. So now what we can do now, since we don't need this anymore, I'm gonna do Control X on here, go back in here, and then Control V, and that's gonna paste it here. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing. Again, no line, I'm gonna select here. We don't want any line on that one. Again, adding in the shadow, just as we've done before, this repetition helps. Adding in the bevel, we've already got the colors here. We, oops, that's not what I want to do. Okay, so selecting on here, this is the one we don't want the line on here. This is the one where we do want the shadow here and we want the bevel here. Perfect, so now it's looking very much like it. I also want to do the same just as I did before and make sure the donor hole size. I don't remember this size, so let's double check on that. This one was 65%. Let's make sure this one is also 65% so that they're equal. I also want to make sure that they're both the same size. So we're going to click on here. I'm going to reduce this one just a little bit so that they don't overlap, increasing the width. Okay, and we can increase the size of this a little bit. Okay, that looks very good. We're going to do the same with this. We're going to take a look at the size of the shape, the total shape. That's format. We'll do, let's say, three and uh, four. So we'll just change this to three so that they're both even. I'm going to hold down the control, shape format. The height is going to be three, and this one's going to be four. So they're both in the equal shape. Now all we need to do is just increase the graph on the inside, perfect, so that they're about equal. And then we need to increase that so they both show there. Okay, I like the way that's looking. We'll center that and make sure that that looks streamlined and good. Also, changing the text here, bold here, increasing the text five to 10 font there, and changing that to blue. And I'll, let's update this, to make sure that that's centered, and we also wanna show the percentage sign, so adding that. Okay, now what I wanna do is do the same thing for this, adding that, and of course, adding the data labels in here. So we'll add the data labels here, bring them out to the outside a little bit, just to where they are, looking nice, selecting on both uh, outside and then back inside on the data labels, bold and then increasing the font size to 10. We're going to insert that. I'm going to select on this. I'm going to insert shapes again just as we did before, a text box as we did before. Here's the text box. It's going to be equal this time. I want the annual percentage for the current year. So that's going to be located in the dashboard. That's going to be located that profit right here in 04. Okay, so formatting that just as we did before, selecting on it centering it and i believe it was 28 was a font size let's double check that 28 is correct okay so we've got a 72 percent profit margin here it's been a long video okay this one needs to be expanded so we show both the month sales and the month profit nice that's looking good that's looking good here everything's looking good but it's a little bit hard a little bit the background needs to be a little bit uh, less so let's close this out let's take a quick look so what i mean is i'd like to have something in the background so what i'm going to do is i'm going to insert a shape and i'm going to use a rounded corner so i'm going to expand that here i'm going to basically i'm going to put this behind and i'm going to group it so i'm going to reduce the corners a little bit and I'm going to set it to our shape. I'm going to use this shape fill. But of course, it's going to have a transparency of about 50%. So we're going to go into the more fill colors. I'm going to change the transparency to about 50% and click OK. And I'm going to place this, of course, behind it, send to the back. OK, so that looks nice. I really like the way that that looks. So we've got everything here on set art. Let's bring this up to make sure that everything fits within the reason. OK, so we've got everything. Um, let's hide our columns. We can hide columns A and B now. So just as we said, no. All right, so that's looking really good. I like the way that that looks. And so what I want to do is I want to group these. Remember inside our code, let's take a look, not this, but well, I got two workbooks open. Inside our menu macros, we've got dashboard group. So we want to need to create a group based on this name and then we can uncomment that out. So I'm going to uncomment that out now. And so what I want to do is I want to take all of these shapes, everything that we have here, and I want to put it in one single group and call it dashboard group. So we've selected everything. I'm gonna group it all together. Now make sure that when you grouped it all together, we want to go in, control one will do it. I wanna make sure that we are automatically not setting that move, but don't size on that group, that's important. Okay, good, I like that, and giving that that name, control V, dashboard group. 
okay so now we've already uncommented here there was another one inside the dashboard we got to make sure this one is the right one that's the one so basically i want to hide the dashboard group when we select everything and i want to show it when we show the dashboard all right so let's take a look use the selection we can undo that select off that and select back the dashboard and we've got the dashboard okay so let's take a quick look inside this the only thing in the dashboard is we are going to refresh all the data and we're going to undo the freeze pane so notice that we're not freezing the paints very 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 cool this is a really fantastic training in this training if we're going to review this i want to make sure that you understand that we are i'm here to help you so please let me know what it is that i can do i respond to each and every comment of course on youtube and email as well let me know how i can serve you how i can help you in this training we created an incredible inventory management system and we put it all on the same sheet all the features and functions are on a single sheet we've got customers where we were able to add new customers update customers delete customers oh there's one thing i forgot i want to show you how to hide these notice it's got text and numbers we're going to go into home i knew i forgot something more number format right all you need to do is use a custom format and three semicolons why three semicolons because it's text and it is numbers so three semicolons if it was just numbers two semicolons click ok now they're hidden and we'll do the same thing for suppliers products i don't need to do that in the training but that's how we hide all the data i'll make sure that when you get it is hidden that's all we need to do adding new customers we have adding new suppliers products adding and updating purchases sales orders and an incredible dashboard all wrapped into one incredible inventory management and we designed it all from scratch on the screen in front of you this sheet thank you so much for joining me on these really long trainings i do appreciate it don't forget to subscribe uh, click the notification icon bell comment below like the video i really do appreciate when you like that that helps for the youtube algorithms let me know if you have any ideas of what you want to see on training coming up and we'll see you next week thanks again Thank you.